Well, good afternoon and welcome to Sydney Parade today on Sunday. Beautiful Sunday in July. It's forecast to be the best day of the year so far. And you join us here at Sydney Parade for this clear currency Bob Kerr Irish Senior Cup game between CIYMS and Pembroke. CIYMS have won the toss and they've decided to field first. And that sees JJ Garth and Dermot Tucker opening the batting for Pembroke. Our umpires today are Willie Clark and Azim Ali Beg. And it's a beautiful day. CIYMS have brought a coach load down with them. There's about 50 of them here all together. And there's about three people from Pembroke. So if you are watching, you are listening. We'll quickly run you through the teams before Niall whips that off the screen for me. CIYMS, Nigel Jones, Chris Doherty, Ross Adair, John Matchell, Jason van der Merve, Keith Dudgeon, Graham Kennedy, Jakob Muller, Jack Beatty, Carson McCullough and Adam Kennedy. On the Pembroke side today, Theo Lawson is our captain and wicketkeeper. Dermot Tucker, Jonathan Garth, Poonish Mehta, Gavin Hoey, Robin Kelly, Danny Hogan, Paul Lawson, Pooh Sharma, Ryan Hopkins and David Cosgrave. That is in no way a batting order. But they bat all the way down. Ryan Hopkins earlier pre-match was mentioning that he might be at number nine. And for somebody of his talent at number nine, that shows there's some good batting here in the Pembroke side. Let's hope they put up a total that can be defended later on this afternoon. First ball, good length, put right up there. Dermot Tucker just playing it out. short ball this one squeezed between bat pads body just managing to get through but over the stumps it's life scoring today on NV play We'll be keeping an eye out to see how the Irish women are going to doing against Australia today, up in Breedy. There's the first shot of the day. It goes down to third. It's well fielded. Just a single. Pembroke off the mark. Can't see anything on NV play. Scores. A desperate attempt to try and keep up with what's happening here. Another one dropped in short. J.O. Garth just playing it down. Yep, if it's not an international. Disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, Once again, Cricket Island making... Place, I think, somehow, but... oh, it's MV play. As I took me somewhere else when I followed the lead. Hidden link. Well, it's a quite enough start, but we're underway. Oh, I'm going 
through to the keeper, and that's the end of the first over. Just the one run on the board. Well, I can't find any live scoring. If somebody out there can find live scoring... Oh, there we go. Are we going to leave that on the screen for me? I will intend to. My goodness. See how I go with that. So Keith Dodgen it was with that first over, just went for the wrong one run. Definitely a day for liquids. Do you want some liquid? Now bowling from the nursery end, Nigel Jones. Just left, go down past the outside of off. Does that page automatically reload? I have no idea. We'll find out soon. Yes, we will. This one, stump to stump, just played out on the offside to point. No run there. See IOYMS in their purple pajamas. Pembroke in their traditional black and red. Yes. And there it is, the first wicket. Just trying to play that one, and it edged through to slip, and that's the first wicket down with one on the board, and that is not the start that Pembroke were looking for today. Still, it will mean there's some very happy CI YMS people around the ground at the moment. So Dermot Tucker departs. Just that one to his name. It's. Well, he scored all the Pembroke runs so far. There's the replay. It nearly dived in front of the keeper. But he got enough on it. it went through enough. And there's the first wicket down. One for one. In this, the second over. And going out at number three today. Danny Hogan. Once again, it's such a shame that Cricket Island don't refer. Cricket Island doing the club game a disservice. Danny Hogan wouldn't have expected to be in already in the second over. One of the strengths of Pembroke this year has been their opening partnerships with Tucker and Garth. Two of them have done very well. Jones again then. Both teams, of course, are shorn of any Irish stars. straight bat. He's playing it back. Jones getting down and getting enough on it to stop the ball running past him. Played away on the offside behind point, but the third man is down there. There's no danger. It's just going to be a single. Practically walk that single. And that concludes the second over. So two off, two overs, one wicket down.
A day for many liquids. And it being a Sunday, uh, uh, carbonated, carbonated caramel. Um, yeah, it being a school night, of course, we'll be going a bit easier on the Chieftain IPA. Other, other drinks are available that I had last night. That might be a little tight today. It's up there now anyway, so... It is what it is, as Mr. Johnson would say. Dems to breaks. Played down by Hogan, down to third man. That's the busiest fielder on the ground at the moment. That's another run. Umpire Willie Clark down at the far end, down at the St. John's end. Anyone want to tell him he's right in front of that camera? <laughs> So dungeon to bowl again from the St John's end. It's short. And Garth is onto it quickly, but it only runs out to square leg. And it's just another dot ball. It looks, it looks warm out there. I have to say, I'm glad for the cover of the gazebo. I would certainly recommend packing the sun cream if you're coming down today. So much better to be saying pack the sun cream rather than pack an extra jumper. But uh, there is a light a scattering of cloud above. And that's not going to stop the UV light making us all look like ripe tomatoes going into work on a Monday morning. Oh, that one really reared up. Hogan did very well to play that with soft hands. Oh, sorry, Garth did very well to play that with soft hands. There is a bit of menace to that delivery. You just have to keep scrolling. Yeah. Yep, helpful things that people do for us. Ah, good to see Mr. Bannigan is down. He was down here last night enjoying an apple juice. Another one played down towards third man. Another one that third man fields quite comfortably. And another single on the board. I think all of Pembroke runs so far have come from third man. will be the happier of the two teams at the moment. Another one down played towards a similar area, but this time the second slip gets down and stops it going down third man. So, Brian, good night last night. Get home about quarter past, yeah? And that's why I went home early. So four on the board at the loss of one wicket. That one very short and it's signalled as a wide. Yes, uh, we apologise for the lack of on-screen graphics today. That's down to the fact that this game is being scored on NV Play as opposed to the normal Leinster games we do cover where Crick Tops is the preferred scoring programme. But we can't get the MV Play one up on screen, and if we could, we'd probably have to pay loads of money for it. So you're just going to have to put up with me telling you the score. And another run to third man. Five on the board now after three overs. Danny Hogan has moved on to three. 
JJ Gar still on one. And three overs gone. Jones now will bowl the fourth over, the wicket taker so far. And this time he's got Danny Hogan to bowl at. Very whippy action he has. Served him well over the years. Plenty of class and talent in this CIYMS side. Good blend of use of the experience and internationals. Nicely played out, up to mid on. Well, it's nicely, safely fielded. Just a single to Hogan. It's warm. It's warm. It's certainly warm. Nicely played away behind the square. I'll take one. And what a super piece of fielding there. Keith Dungeon. Dungeon. He's uh, fielding down there, behind square. Deep wide square leg, I suppose, would be a, an adequate description. And when he threw that one in from the boundary, he showed very clearly that once he has the ball in his hand, there's no run after that. Hogan trying to chop one down to third again. At least that was the intent he showed. CIYMS now. Definitely happier of the two teams at this stage. Driven straight into cover's hands on the bounce. No, no. Played away again, fielded nicely. End of the fourth over, eight on the board. Danny Hogan on four, JJ Garth, Jonathan Garth on two. Just the one wicket full, that of Dermot Tucker in the second over. But these two are starting to build a new foundation. First boundary of the day, and if fortune favours the brave, then JJ Garth is very definitely a courageous shot. Playing it down through the slips, managing to bounce it through, and it goes away for four, and that's the first boundary of the day. Pembroke reach 12 for one. I suspect Niles now checking to see which one of his cameras caught that the best. Another one played away behind the wicket, and another one that's gone for four. Misfield there by third man. He's been so clean up until now. He tried to dive and pick it up at the same time. And it just snuck under his hands. Didn't bounce as he expected. And four more runs for JJ Garth. 
And that certainly has helped the score, helped the foundation, and helped JJ Garth. They're just making adjustments to where third man is fielding now. Nigel Jones orchestrating field marshal from first slip. Good delivery, played out to point, fielded at point, dot ball. Yeah, this is the shot. You just see it just awkwardly came to slip. And then that shot there. As you can see, he went down to get it, and he's just misjudged it, pulled his hands at the last second, thinking the ball would be in them. Good opening spell. Dudgeon bowling very well. Nice tight line. James Cresswell won't be able to make it to join us in the commentary box today. Family first. And quite rightly so. Beautiful day like this, you'd have thought. Bring the family down. Get them all in the commentary box. There is a bit of a breeze that's keeping the temperature down to merely boiling and not scorchio. It's not the usual sea breeze coming over from railway, but rather coming from the mountains. Consider weighing down the gazebo just to stop any thought it might have of taking off. And that one goes straight through to the keeper. And that concludes the fifth over and a fine over two. Just those two boundaries, neither of which could really be attributed to the bowler. One was a misfield and the other one went through the slips and raced down to the boundary, unprotected boundary. So after five overs, the score is 16 for one. It's played back, out to the pitch of the ball. Just letting that one go through to the keeper. Still only the sixth over. Plenty of time to go in this game. 50 over game, of course. And would you believe, having won this competition in 2019, Pembroke is still defending that total. COVID years, the summer of 20 and 21, saw so no Bob Kerr games. Just the, the All Island T20s were as far as it went, but here we are back with the Bob Kerr. Oh, that's a missed shot, not hit anywhere near where Danny Hogan wanted it to go. Just the two again. Good arm in from the deep. Danny Hogan trying to play that one a lot straighter, came off the inside of his bat. Played down to third man. As I say, the busiest fielders on the field today so far. Far more being played for runs behind the bats than in front. Oh. 
Good delivery. Excellent delivery from Jones to finish the over. Six down now. Score has moved on to 19 for one. Oh, <laughs> Next, you'll be telling Barry that you don't want to move into the box until he's got air conditioning and underfloor heating installed. So Pembroke starting again after that loss of the early wicket. Dermot Tucker just edging one through to the keeper in the second over. School was on one. These two now looking to see off the opening bowlers. It's Keith Dudgeon now starts his fourth over. He's just making slight adjustments to the field in front of the bat. He's waiting for Danny Hogan just to spoon one up. Lots of appeals from the fielders, no appeal from the bowler. He knew. He knew. And so did Jones, didn't move from his spot in the slips. But second slip, gully, point. All went up thinking that perhaps there had been an edge. But it came off the pad, not the glove. Luckily for Hogan, what a good delivery that was. Cut him in two. Just short of a length. And Danny Hogan this time plays one out through the covers. And that's a glorious answer. The bowler on the previous delivery very definitely had him in trouble, but this time pitched up in the slot and just punched away through the covers. Four more runs onto the total for Pembroke. That will take them on to, oh, I think, on to 23. And wait for the scoreboard to catch us up. And this the seventh over. And this time Danny Hogan lets that one go through to the keeper and probably a wise decision, wide of, wide of off stick. Plenty of chat in the field from CIYMS. Also, plenty of room on the leg side. 7 2 field here at the moment. Which, of course, means that if something is played out on the leg side, the chances are they'll get through for at least a single, and they do. The score moves on to 24. Danny Hogan moves on to 12. Jonathan Garth currently on 10. Score is 24 for one, and we're in this, the seventh over. And we'd like to say a big welcome to the 25 devices that are currently tuned in to us here. As is my want. I don't know if Niall's managed to figure out a way of doing it yet, <clears throat> but my number, if you want to text or WhatsApp, or even Twitter. My Twitter handle is at CraigPCC. I might also pick it up if you put in at Pembroke Cricket. At Pembroke Cricket. And my phone number, for those of you dialing from outside the EU. And uh, no, all the lines. Oh, I suppose it's outside the EU, but inside the single market, isn't it? So, 00353. 86-156-4442. As we just come to the end of the seventh over, the score has moved on 24 for one. Pembroke will be starting to feel a bit better now. As I say, that number again is 086-156-4442. Feel free.
Stuart Malcolm. Thank you very much for liking the tweet that announced the coverage here today. Danny giving himself a bit of room but all he did was show the edge of the bat to Jones and Jones went in search of it didn't quite get it with this delivery Tempted to follow outside the line of off stump. Nigel Jones showing all of his experience here. Danny Hogan just letting that one go on length. No, what happens if you hit ball by ball? Surely that automatically over uh, uploads. Good over from Jones again. Eight overs gone. 24 on the board. That's good, Jose. So 24 for one after eight. safely it was up there an awful long time but he found a bit of clear turf and they get two for it that wasn't where the batsman intended or how the batsman intended hitting that one at all that was up in the air a long long time joke. playing Zimbabwe in the final of the T20 World Cup qualifier currently being held in Zimbabwe the two teams have already qualified for the World Cup and they are the final two of the 16 teams that will be playing 
in Australia this winter, this October. Ireland, of course, already in the pre-qualifying group, taking place in Hobart. But in the final of the qualifier, Zimbabwe find themselves 46 for two off five overs. So going along at over nine and over, but they've also lost two early wickets. This one driven back at the bowler. He gets to it easy enough. Two's coming the over. shot from Garth, just one hand holding the bat at the end of it. As I say, feel free to text in. Hmm? Oh, that's lovely. Might go and get a drink in a minute. Calling a pint of orange squash, maybe a, a lump or two of ice. Nine overs gone now, just still that one wicket to fall, that of Dermot Tucker in the second over. But at the moment, Garth and Hogan steadying the ship, this second wicket. They've put on 25 together in, well, just about seven and a half overs. Lovely day here today. And we're joined in the box. Hi, Craig. Hi, Joe. How are you today? Great. So, what are your views on this start? Um, we're pretty happy with it. You know, two very good bowlers opening up. Um, we're delighted, Tony, have the one down, have a platform where we can go from there. You know, we've got a lot of power. Uh, Hoppo's come into the team today at nine, and he's got senior hundreds opening the batting, so bat deep, so we're, we're not too fussed. We're only 26 off the first nine. So does that, does that mean that your batting position has two numbers in it? It does. I'm, I'm a 10, so we bat to 10. <laughs> Of the CYMS Alakadoos have already made their first trip to the bar. And I tell you, it's not a bad idea to keep the liquids on board at this stage. Yeah, the loss of Dermot so, so early was unfortunate. Yeah, I'd be lying if we didn't. If I personally wasn't thinking a bit of. Probably would have taken three down at the end of the power play shot. Run, Dan. Well done. Sorry. Yeah, you're, playing, on <laughs> you're playing the game as well, Joe. Playing it from the cons box, as we all do. Another run onto the total, though. Yeah. We've no, because of NV Play being the scoring package today. There's no. Uh, there's nothing on the screen for our. Yeah. So, so our viewer. So we have to keep telling them the score. 26 for one in this, the tenth over. I think it's 27 for one, but there you go. Well, these two technically very good at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, very straight bats. Exactly. I think as it goes on, we'll probably look for JJ to anchor it and Danny to play his kind of natural game. He obviously has a lot of power, a lot of shots as well. So. Be nice to see Danny go on to get a big score today. He would. Oh, Jones again, just nibbling around that off stick. He's just so consistent in his bowling, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's vastly experienced, to be fair. Do you mean old? <laughs> He's just played a lot. <laughs> nice, nice recovery. <laughs> Got out of that one quite nicely. Well, the Rockshaw's proving popular with our friends 
from the north. That did keep low. He managed to jam it back down onto it and keep it out. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see CYM have brought so many people down to support. It's been interesting one so early in the day. You almost feel like it's an away game. It's kind of our supporters haven't come down yet. They've obviously all come down the bus together. Well, I suspect a number of our supporters are nursing the sulfur dean this morning. We'll join the party later on. And they may come down for hair of the dock. So, 10 overs gone, 27 on the board, just the one wicket to fall, that of Dermot Tucker. Danny Hogan and JJ Garth. And there's going to be a change now. Wicket, wicket he was throwing on a helmet. Graham Kennedy into the attack, left arm spinner. Irish International. He's been in a squad, I'm not sure he's a cap. Okay. Um, Mulder's in as well. You have Mulder his next thing to deal with later. Yeah. And I'm not sure how they kind of go with their fifth bowler. They cross the airballs a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't know too much about a few of them. It's one of those things, isn't it? When you play a team from up north. Oh, it's, it's, it's the lack of knowledge about the players yeah. up there. You, I mean, somebody can burst onto the scene. And the same goes the other way. Somebody yeah. bursts onto the scene in Leinster. Yeah. And then he's playing an all-island game. I mean, part of the thing is that we do only play yeah. between the provinces in the National Cups and the uh, and the uh, Bob Care. Yeah. I suppose the interesting thing for us, kind of, we've had a lot of people break into the first team, and there hasn't really been an Irish Senior Cup for two years. So, like, this is my first Irish Senior Cup game. Dermot's probably played a couple, but we're still looking kind of at Hoppo, Paul, Theo to give us a lot of kind of intel about. The what guys who guys were there do. three years ago. I yeah. said earlier, we're, we're actually still defending this cup. Yeah, it's an Thank, interesting one to Thanks think. to COVID. <laughs> no shot. I'd love to see him play a shot at that. Yes. He's way outside the line. Just play any stroke at it. And he's safe as houses. Yeah, I'm not in favour of that not playing a shot. No. I think umpires always get a little bit excited by that as well. They get a chance to show their knowledge. Yeah, exactly. I think it's I think it's done enough. Judging by the screen here to miss. It's better. That's much better. Getting the full face of the bat onto the ball. Just running it down short third. No single. But yeah, even even without Irish internationals on both teams. Yeah. It looks like a, a two class outfits playing here, as it should be for the Premier Cup competition for clubs in Ireland. In fact, this is a fixture that would have been um, worthy of a final. So you're back from injury now, Joe? I am, yeah. Well, 10 hours yesterday. Feeling good. How did yesterday go? Yesterday was a bit of a tricky day for us, you know. Came off at half time, probably thought we had the better of the first 50 overs, chasing about 240 on a good wicket, fast outfield, and then. Danny changing his shot there. Um, sorry. Who are you, who are you playing? Mary. Help yourself to the cake, by the way. <laughs> I'd love to be able to say cake sent in by a watcher, a viewer. It's brought by you. Shot, Dan. It's got to be two. It's got to be two, but he's yeah. got a good arm from out there. It's well run. Every throw from that boundary has been spot in at the stumps. You'd want to be taking, careful taking a second to him. I think we'll be very content with that at the moment. Whatever that is, three off the over. We're not too worried either way. No, plenty of time to go. Yeah. Still another 39 overs, which for me would be a full game. Maybe CI are showing their cards a bit here. Bowling Jones is sixth. Don't know what their plan is. I think at his pace, he'll probably have to have a lot of tricks to be effective at the death. Yes. See what happens. <coughs> and if they can use him now. Yeah. Again, now it's, he's clearly given the captain kind of an element of stability. Kind of rotate bowlers at the other end and see 
Jones can just get a breakthrough. Keep it steady at this end. And he's the one who got the breakthrough in the second over. As you say, he has plenty of experience. It's not his first, uh, first no. birthday party. Oh, nicely, JJ. nicely played by JJ. Up to mid on, off. Cleanly fielded. As an Ali Beg is the umpire at this, the nursery end. Jones is bowling from. He's making a little change to the field, moving his third man a bit wider. Comes down the track and slaps one through the offside for four runs. My co-commentator, a bit of anxiety when he came down the track. Yeah. Didn't oh. exactly middle it either, did he? No, he got a bit of a toe, but you know, placed it well. It clunked off the bat, but with enough force to reach the boundary. Four more runs for Garth. He's decided the shackles have been on too tight for too long. And he came down the track to Jones. Comes down again, and this has gone Beautiful past shot. the fielder, and that's an even better shot. Push through extra cover. You just keep talking there, Joe. I'll be back in a second. Beautiful from JJ. Showing his full repertoire there. Breeze gets up. It's great batting from JJ. Just Two pushing bounds. it up to long on. Get Takes off the single. Break. It's the way of it, especially in white ball cricket. I think if you fight it out for the first you know, five, seven, ten overs, a lot of runs to be had out there. Yeah, once you get past the lovely, lovely shot. And no. Third man gets there, and it's a... Hold on, Danny. Danny Hogan taking two, and perhaps taking a risk that maybe needed to be taken, but he was happy enough. Thanks that ends the 12th. Test. One to go. Over. Oh, I thought it was over up, but Willie Clark was just making sure the stumps were rebuilt to his satisfaction down at the James Cresswell end. Amazed how many things happen at James Cresswell's end. Oh, they thought about the quick single, cheeky single. It wasn't to be. And that does end the 12th over. The score has moved on to 39 for one, according to the scoreboard. CIYMS might have, need to have a think about their strategy with Jones. To keep her up at this phase of the game is probably the play. You can see that kind of, you know, when you're trying to nick him off early on to have to keep her back, but the two batsmen are in, they're kind of coming at him hard. I think the keeper came up for the last ball there, it's probably the right strategy. We'll see if he bowls another now. He's about six there. Well, he has four remaining. Will the skipper keep on of those four for later on in the innings? <laughs> Nigel Jones. <laughs> the experienced players know it all the potable. Bit of an inside joke there, maybe. Perhaps for you. <laughs> I think it was for me, yeah. Just put those in a bit of shade. Keep him close where Niall keeps him in his eye line. He might talk into one later on. Oh, he's gone big and he's gone straight. Has he got enough on it? Six. Yeah, it looks like that went all the way. First six of the game, JJ Garth taking on Kennedy. He's not willing to be tied down. 
sensible play now would be to push one out to the covers and take one. There we go, pushed out into the offside, take the single, get down the other end, give Danny a go. JJ's tempo has been really good here, you know, just putting away the bad ball or manufacturing a boundary and then just getting off strike. From a bowler's perspective, you know, it's also more frustrating really than you bowl a boundary ball. All you want is a couple of dots after that to pull your over back. This one takes the edge of Hogan's bat. Doesn't go very far. Two glasses of gin heading out to the players. This game, got the gin and tonics for the batsman. Did you play yesterday? I was involved in the game yesterday. That's beautifully Beautiful played. Ball. That's a super edge past the slip into the gap. No third man down there this time. Which, considering the start of Pembroke's innings was almost entirely down to third man. Uh, that's a beautiful shot. It's not really. Danny obviously is very strong, you know, he looks to kind of hit long on, long off, so I think that's, you know, it's a great option for him, really. It's a, shine, a sign of his growing maturity, he realises that falls down here and falls just as much as four smacked. Exactly. On. Dale does such a great job as well, like, it's amazing, really, that that's not that much pace on that ball and the fielder hasn't, hasn't got a chance. Got, gotten near it. No, the outfield is lightning fast and it's only going to get faster during this day, I feel. More and more could really do with some water this ground. Exactly. I think Dale does get a bit frustrated, particularly with the square. Could be very dry. Jones to bowl another here with the keeper up. Which I think is a good. Well, having seen JJ Garth coming down the track a couple of times to him, he wants to pin him back into that box. Yeah. I think, yeah. A teenage girl on Warfield Road, I think. <laughs> Played away to point. point. Okay. Not a clean fielding, but clean enough to stop a single. 50 on the board now for Pembroke. 50 for one in this, the 14th over. Jones bowling his seventh over. It looks like they are going to bowl him all the way through. I can't see you saving three of us for later, no. are you? Which makes me think they'll probably make up their fifth bowler, maybe out of two bowlers. It's obviously very hard to rotate four bowlers now for whatever it'll be, 30 overs. One starts getting a bit of tap, like it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to turn. Well, see what happens. It's almost a all your eggs in one basket thing, isn't it? It is. Oh, very close there. The Keeper's doing a good job standing up, taking these nice and cleanly. In the air, and it goes out to the cover boundary, neatly fielded for just a single. 51 now. Yeah, no, I almost wouldn't bother with that live scoring at this stage. It's just more hassle than it's worth. We'll go with the scoreboard and all the errors it induces from me. Hey, Danny. Good straight back that from Danny, and that is the end of. Nigel Jones is seventh over. Yeah. His figures have got to be quite good at this stage. It's an interesting one. It's hard to know what their game is if they're looking at him. It's the way he's kind of bowling, you'd probably think they're looking at him as kind of a containing option. But then he's also he's gone past the outside edge two or three times on the over. It's kind of looking dangerous. Again, you know, JJ's nearly kind of popped onto extra cover as well, so well, a lot of kind of options for him. The captain and Jones have had a good chat there between overs, and I wonder if perhaps that change might be coming along. Captain not willing to leave the cupboard absolutely empty as far as Jones is concerned at this stage. It's 
Such a big game, you know, straight knockout of would seem a bit crazy to kind of, or even a bit reckless maybe to bowl out your opener so early. You never know though, maybe that's what they do, like I haven't oh, really look. looked at their scorecards. And if you look at Pembroke and what the hell they've been using Poonish. I know. Poonish Mota, then, then perhaps, you know, yeah. it doesn't sound so ridiculous to be bowling your opener all the way. Run, Danny. Yes. May have just a run out there then, do you think, Joe? No, I thought. That's a well used gym card. How often are you in there? <laughs> Reasonably often, yeah. David Cosgrove's in there. I think he's set yeah, up. Yeah, he actually took my one. He's yeah. actually set up camp bed at this stage. Yeah, he's always in there. Good watching. I've been leaving that one, I think, on length. Yep, it, it would have been better for all concerned if the Irish players of both clubs were available. Yeah. Nicely yeah. manufactured shot by Hogan, just a dot ball. It's an interesting one. We um, I mean, offered them next weekend and we said, you know, I think club spectacle, you know, to have everyone's internationals available that they'd have theirs back and we'd have ours back next weekend. But uh, they didn't want to do it. So. How many are they missing? They're only missing oh, Mark there. Yeah. And we're missing Calberni, yeah. McCarthy, Mitchell, Tucker. Yeah. Sorry, I can understand there. I can understand there, yeah. If they weighed it up. Mind you, if they looked at the scorecards, see, Andy, I don't think this the scored a run for Pembroke. It's a tough one, you know. He's only played two games and he's got two good balls. But Lorcan has got runs for the first this year. Lorcan's played beautifully for us, yeah. And the other one, Diet Runs, of course, Barry McCarthy, who's been yeah. a revelation with the bat this year. Yeah. It's been excellent, and you know, he really turned up for us when we needed him in the first round, or the second round. We had a buy in the first round of this competition against YM, you know, 30 for four or whatever he was. We were when he came in, played beautifully for 60. And YM lost again yesterday in the league. Oh, that's a lovely shot. The boundary rider will get there. And keep it to a single, but it was a nice shot through the covers. Yeah, um, YM lost to. They were unfortunate, to be fair. Their opening bowler was hit twice in two balls in the head and had to go and get the hospital, get H checked out. HIA. And then their other opening bowler went down the 30th over. The ball popped up when he was fielding, hit him in the jaw, and he was off the hospital oh, as well. No. Well, so, but um, I went down to watch the end of that after we got smoked and the sound off the bat of the Valbergen players, like a shot, they were wellying it. Well, kind of what you expect from Valbergen, isn't it? All, all or nothing? Yeah. It's going very, going very well for year. them this year, yeah? Mm -hmm. Top of the table? Um, Certainly in contention. They are, they're top of the table. I think they're six and one. They've lost to Marion. Six and one. Our league campaign not going quite as well. No, it's a tricky one, you know. I suppose I kind of rely on guys who wouldn't be playing if, you know, Lork and Barry, Andy play. It's kind of hard mentally to come into that and perform. Yep. Obviously, from our perspective, sometimes I think we rely a lot on Lork and, you know, kind of lose one early and just plays beautifully and goes in an incredible tempo to get us out of those holes. And when he's not there, you know, we kind of find ourselves digging deeper instead of fighting it out at times. Jones moving his slip closer to the keeper, looking for that edge now from Garth. This is Jones' eighth over, so it definitely looks like he's bowling through. Um, it could be it could be that just he doesn't like coming back. Yeah. Can bowl ten know. through, be loose enough, and then he'll tighten up and would he be able to come back again? Jones is one of the interprovincial coaches. coaches. The lightning coach, yeah. Shot. So eight overs for Jones, 16 overs in total. The score has moved on to 55 for one. Garth is on 32. Hogan on 21. 
MacArthur sort of shot ahead because of that last Kennedy over where he took a six and a four. I think the game's probably kind of entering a mini phase here where, you know, we're going to wait and see what happens at this end after Jones is done. We're happy to kind of tick it over until then. Well, Jones is only going for 2.75. You'd, um, you'd imagine it'll be Mulder at this end. Spin at both ends. Yeah. It's usually only Pembroke who, who bowls spin oh, at both yeah. ends on this ground. We've got three and three today. Three seamers, three spinners. Well, you, Poonish, and Pooey. Pooey, Ryan Hopkins. Sorry, we're, yeah! sorry, we're four and two today. And Garth goes. He went forward to Kennedy. It took the shoulder of the bat and went through to slip. And that's the second wicket to fall. And there's 55 on the board. So Garth departs for 32. Kennedy gets his man. And it looks like with 16 overs gone, everyone's going to take a drink. So we'll leave you and be back within a minute. Joe, thanks very much for joining us. Absolute pleasure to talk to you. We'll leave on the ground microphone, but we'll turn off the desk ones. And that's a good start for Pembroke. 55 for two. There's JJ Garth departs. And Danny Hogan remains unbeaten on 21. Talk to you again in just a minute. Uh, I guess another glass of ice. Thanks.
Well, drinks break over, players retake the field. And just to remind you, 55 for two now. And wicket falling the ball before they took those drinks. Kennedy getting rid of JJ Garth, caught in the slips. So 55 for two. New batsman to the middle. Captain Theo Lawson. Pembroke will be hoping that Theo provides his usual. Runs for the brook. Four balls remaining in this, the 17th over. Drinks taken early as a result of that fall of wicket. And Pembroke will have to dig in and start again. There's the noise of the dart leaving Sydney Parade Station. Reverberates around the ground. Kennedy with good delivery. Lawson tempted, looking to play it out on the offside. Didn't get that. This will be a vital partnership for Pembroke's hopes now. And Lawson chips that one away. Short third stops it, stops any thought of the single. Finally, that dart from Sydney Parade Station makes its way. <laughs> Lawson with the attempted sweep. Big appeal from Kennedy, not many others. The bat involved, no signal from the umpire for an extra, so Lawson is off the mark. Well, that was the question, and Kennedy asked the question, and Clark answered it with a no. Hogan playing one, just bouncing in front of first slip. Again, not doing the best they can. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. There you, there go. you go. Now, now you're on now the you screen. Can hear you as well, if you want. <laughs> you can say. Hello, Pat. Hello, Rebecca. Hope you're having a wonderful time. Miss you. Love you. Bye. Thanks, guys. There we go for our Australian viewers. Come on, turn the screen on, Bill. If anyone would like to claim that man later at the end of the game. Right in front of the camera for that last ball, the, oh. the right camera for the American. Yes, it's unfortunate. So Jones continuing. This will be his ninth. He's two overs left. And CIYMS have decided to go with him for the first 20. As JJ said, that leaves you then with 30 overs in which to retake four bowlers. Does it cut down your options as a captain? Is it the best use of your resources? And that's, that's really the question. Sun beaming down here in Pembroke now. There is a thin layer of crowd. That one doesn't really get up on Lawson. Afternoon. Good. It's good to see those no dogs on the ground signs working so well. <laughs> I've never seen so many. It's like a dog show here at the moment. However, they are all on leads and they're all being well cared for and none of them are pooping where they shouldn't. And more importantly, neither are the owners. So, Jones continuing now his ninth over 
It's very definitely a tactical decision by CIYMS to bowl him out. There's certainly no point in keeping one over behind. Thorson taking the quick run to one just played down on the offside. down to third man. It's been the Pembroke favoured area of scoring so far this morning. Well, this early afternoon. Dog sitting at the moment, Willow, lovely an ancient dog. Lawson just keeps a very straight back to that one. That concludes Jones's ninth over. Score is on 58 for two. And those two wickets to fall are the two openers. Dermot Tucker, who fell in the second over. And JJ Garth, who fell fine catch at slip off the bowling of Kennedy and he fell to 32 the score at the moment 58 for 2 18 overs gone Graham Kennedy left arm around to continue now from the St John's end Hogan just playing that one defensively How important a toss was this to win today? Well, we don't know. Again, Hogan playing it out behind square on the offside. No run there. Willow, sit. 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 Good girl. It's gone big, it's gone out towards Cow, and it's one bounce and beautifully fielded on the laneway. Ed Dwyer, I think that is, showing the absolute reflexes. No, that's not Ed Dwyer. Somebody in the crowd showing great reflexes to take that one one-handed as it bounced over the short fence. Four more runs onto the total, four more runs for Danny Hogan. Gets well forward on top of the ball, just plays it down on the offside for the dot ball. There's the replay of that four. Big hoik. Knew it was safe out that direction once he made the contact. Oh, that one's gone flying past slip. And that's going to run down for another four for Hogan. That'll take him on to 30. It'll take the score on to 66. Kenzie will feel very hard done by there. That could very easily have stuck in slip's hand. Uh, instead, four onto the total, four for Danny Hogan. Just a little bit demoralising for Graham Kennedy. Force had their first win of the season yesterday down here, playing North County. Fine performance. I think player of the match there was Sirwash Safi. Nice straight back from Hogan again. The dulcet tones of one William Dwyer as he walks past muttering to himself. You can see how just how fast that outfield is, how quickly that camera has to pan to keep the ball in frame. So, Nigel Jones now, one over to go.
noise you hear in the background. More trains heading up and down the coastline. <coughs> 66 for two then, as Jones enters his last over. Thudding that one into the keeper's gloves. As I say, if anybody out there in the real world wishes to get in touch with us via Twitter, just include at Craig PCC. Oh, that one just getting past the edge of Lawson's bat and doesn't the bowler know it. Back to that final of the World Cup qualifier in the T20. Zimbabwe have reached 109 for six off 15. Certainly the pace has slowed down there with the loss of wickets. Another one played out to the boundary, just a single. they would be quite happy just to see Nigel Jones off now. In that World Cup qualifier, Uganda beat Hong Kong for fifth place. And Josh Butler has brought up his half-century in England's game against India. He's now taken over as captain. Now that Morgan has announced his retirement. playing Valley Spallum today in the National Cup. They at least have a link to their NV play. Hogan plays that one beautifully just to push out on the leg side. Fielder keeps it to a single, and some good backing up to make sure it is a single. <laughs> As we just have a quick look at the National Cup. Deriahi playing North County, and they're 14 for two off four overs. Russia playing Cregan, and Russia 91 for two off 20 overs. Ali Spallon, a 17 for Nort, off four against Railway. County Galway, 32 for two off 11 against the Titans of Terenur. Oh, that's gone up, it's gone wide. I don't think the field is gonna make it. And a bit of spin afterwards, takes it right down to the boundary, but he picks it up. And they come back. All runs to the total. Lisbon are playing the hills in this Irish Senior Cup. And Lisbon are 100 for two off 14. Seems to be about it. CIYMS won the tops and elected to bowl. Nicely oh, played out by Lawson. Last five overs have gone 18 for one. This partnership is already worth 16. It's a bit short. Lawson goes down and sweeps it, and they'll just take a single. There are two fielders down at Cyril's corner. Oh, no, no, no. 
Oh, my goodness, everything happened there. Lawson just got a little bit on it. Got the keeper interested, but the ball fell to the turf before a keeper could get there. 72 for two now. Danny Hogan has moved on to 34. That one's gone high, got a bit of bounce and turn for Kennedy. And it left Hogan a little bit non plus. And now we will see the first bowling change from the nursery end. Jones having bowled his allocation of 10 overs. He now has 30 overs to look forward to in the field. And CIYMS now are going to have to use four bowlers to cover these 30 overs. We've already seen two of those bowlers in Kennedy. Dodgen. So the new bowler now. We might just ask. What is the bowler's name here, gentlemen? Sorry, bowler's name? Adam Kennedy. So Kennedy Kennedy are the bowlers. Ian yeah, McElwain watching in Riyadh or Dubai or somewhere where there's loads of sand and sea uh, and sun will absolutely be absolutely be delighted Kennedy Kennedy so Theo Lawson then to face Adam Kennedy I don't know a lot about Adam Kennedy. And neither does Noah. It's just pushed away on the offside by Lawson to the ring, and he takes the single. Two for two in this, the 22nd over now. Adam Kennedy, bowler number four. Well Plenty of support on the sideline for the CYMS team. Effort ball from Kennedy, put a bit more into that, bent his back. Looking for the sight screen to be given a little nudge. Hoey and Tucker make their way over. Literally needed it moving, 13 centimetres. Another effort ball. He really pushes some effort into that. But Hogan just plays him away through the offside, takes the single, brings Lawson back onto strike. through this first over, finding his line and length. Another effort ball, wide and short, and that's been smacked away square by Theo Lawson. Four runs through the point area. Point made a despairing dive, wasn't going to get there. And that's another four onto the total, taking it up to 78. And that will take Theo Lawson on to nine. Adam. 
Lawson taking the quick single to the fielder who's out on the ring. Right on the edge of the ring. Gave him a chance to push through the single. That ends the over for Kennedy. His first. The score has moved on to 79 now. Lawson is on 10. Hogan on 35. And there are 22 overs gone. CIYMS, of course, won the Premier League in the NCU as recently as 2018. And they've won two senior leagues in the NCU and two Challenge Cups. What a good couple of years they've had. Winning the league in 12 and 18 and the Cup in 15 and 17. And they have a youth membership of over 100. And now we see fifth bowler coming on. Bowler's name, Paul. Good Mulder, Irish international, a few years ago. Sort of faded from the national picture, but still really nice guy to go for a pint with. I can actually say that from personal experience. Jacob was there. The night of the kebab. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Yep. The night of the kebab. The story that unfortunately won't make it onto the airways. However, details are uh, available by direct message. Mulder gets the leg spin off. It's a hesitation in the single, but only by Lawson. Hogan was going all the way. Ball nearly running away for a boundary after hitting the batsman. Touch of who did that in the World Cup final? Ben Stokes, wasn't it? The more I, the more I watch that final, the more I'm convinced that England should never have won it. I'm glad they did, for, for Morgan's sake, but New Zealand definitely had a better claim to that title. Just played round the corner by Hogan. So at this stage now, we've seen all five bowlers that CIYMS have to use. The question being, do they have a six that they might use? Oh, that's a bit. Bit short from Mulder then. Lawson couldn't quite get away with that. No, just pass me up one of your. Yeah, yeah. There's no great rush. Much better ball from Mulder. This will be an intriguing battle now. The sweep of Lawson versus the leg spin of Mulder. Yeah, just a short Mulder. It's just to make sure your monitor doesn't fall over. Yeah. By the way, Lawson very good at taking these singles, just rotating the strike, just keeping things moving. Come on, Adam. 
So, monitor now secured. 35 devices tuned into us. 23 overs gone. Adam Kennedy from the nursery end to Theo Lawson. Strangled appeal from the wicketkeeper. No appeal from the bowler. 82 for two. The score remains. Hogan has moved on to 36 without fuss and without concern. Lawson's still finding his way. Played away on the offside, but there's fielders and cover there. Beautiful shot, it's gone straight, they'll take the single. Nigel Jones with some fine fielding, flinging himself on top of the ball. Like a cat playing with a mouse as Ed Dwyer walks past with a mouthful of scone. Or is it a mouthful of scone? Are you a scone or a scone person? Scone. scone. Oh, that's a lovely shot. He wasn't hanging around there. It was almost premeditated the way that went straight back over the bowler's head. Four more runs. Total goes up to 87. Still 35 of you out there tuned in. I hope you're enjoying today's coverage. Does appear to be a bit of cloud cover now. Hopefully that won't be around for too long. Cool. That was picked up far too cleanly and easily for there to be a chance of a run. Smacked away. Hogan has moved on to 40 now as a result of that clubbed four down the ground. Tries to edge that one down between third man and the keeper. Doesn't get anything on it. Concludes the 24th over. And Hogan and Lawson having a chat in the middle of the pitch as everything changes around them. Umpire Willie Clark coming into his end, into the James Cresswell end. Plenty of umbrellas up on the sideline today. Providing a bit of shade. Wilson going along at a very sedate pace at the moment. He's, he's going along at straight rate of 50. But it's what his side need at the moment. Just a steady, steady bat. Let Hogan play around him. There we go. The Lawson sweep comes out for the first time today properly. Oh. 
Hogan trying to scoop that one around, spoon it around onto the leg side so he could take the single, not making any contact that particular time. There's a good crowd down here in Pembroke now, as I say, mainly made up of our visitors from the north. CIYMS bringing down a, a bus load this morning. I believe there was a stop off at the Apple Green there at Lusk. The old breakfast. That's nicely played out. Hogan just takes the single. For those of you who are eagle eyed at various shots, you'll see that Pembroke appear to have two scoreboards now. I can tell you. Nothing is further from the truth. The old scoreboard that used to be on the score box has now been moved to a frame just to the left of it, as you can see there. And what was the old scoreboard will soon become the Noel Walsh Memorial Media Centre. So with 24 overs gone, Score now, 89 for two. Danny Hogan finds himself on 41. And Captain Theo Lawson on 15. The score is actually 90 for two after 25, and Adam Kennedy continues. Just played away towards point. Lawson picks up another single, brings Hogan on to strike. Another big shot. Six straight into the fence at the Park Lane end. Just crashing into the fence just by O'Rourke's gate. Six runs there for Hogan, takes him on to 47. Takes the score on to 97. Fine shot that from Hogan. Making sure he got enough of it. Clear everybody. Fielder back on the fence for that shot now. Wisely choosing against the single there, Lawson. Good loud call of no no. Pembroke just approaching that first century. Just the two wickets down so far. Short ball. Kennedy gets it past the bat and into the keeper's hands. 97 for two now in this, the 26th over. Well, the question will be, do, have, do CI YMS have a six bowler or have we seen all the bowlers to be used today? Played out, cover just stops it, cover fielder stops Danny's shot. It wasn't the most beautifully timed shot of Danny Hogan yet. But it was played with enough force to stop the clean pickup. Do hope a few more are going to make their way down here. It's great to see the brook with a good crowd for a good game of cricket. As it's played down to third man. Another one for Danny, takes him on to 48. Kennedy gets through another over. The score at the end of 26 overs, 98 for two.
Captain just having a word with the bowler. Order to go again. Facing the leg spin, no slip anymore. Field well spread. Just pushes that out to long on. Jogs through for the single, brings Lawson on to strike. Pace forward. Good choice from Lawson there, not trying to hit a single on the misfield. We we're always told don't don't run on a misfield. And he didn't. Score on 99 now. And Lawson gets one away, and that will bring up the 100 for Pembroke. Comes up in the 27th over. Just the two wickets down, and that's quite important for Pembroke. That they have wickets in the shed when they go into the last half of this game. Round of applause as the 100 goes up on the board, and Brian heads home. Thanks for coming, Brian. Just play down towards third. Takes two fielders to get there, and that's Danny Hogan getting through to his half century. Well deserved and well needed half century. Danny Hogan coming good. He's hit a beautiful couple of beautiful shots. Five fours and one six in that half century. That's well played away by Lawson. He was determined to take the single. And that's the end of the over. He'll be facing for the start of the new over. I got no response from Australia. No? Nothing. Oh. I'd have thought they'd have sent me a text message or something, you know. Perhaps they sent you one. They're still watching. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's 10 past, 10 past 11 in Melbourne. Well, Rebecca's lying. She's a nurse. She's hey, a Barry. doctor, sorry. She's lying in an ICU bed watching. <laughs> <laughs> the commentary's that bad that she's on an ICU bed. <laughs> well, if she wants to get in touch, my number is 086 156 4442. And from Australia, that will be 00 353 86 156 4442. That gets you straight through to the commentator. I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on Twitter. At Craig, uh, at Craig PCC. Always good to hear from our viewers, especially our overseas viewers. I should really ask your name as well. Sorry, I'm Andrew. Andrew. Andrew just providing details and photographs of people lying in ICU beds in Australia. I hasten to add that, that not as a patient. You need to take that down. Do you want to open or do you want to close? Like, is it, is it a short or open? Can you please be open? Yeah, or do you want to see it through pairs? What is the best? It has to be true. Uh, I think the best some way to get to We'll just turn down the ground microphone as discussions go on between our technical department and other stakeholders. Adam Kennedy now. Just plays it wide of point. The boundary rider will get round in time. Keep it to a single. But you can see Hogan's intent with Adam Kennedy is to take him on a bit. I 
Theo Lawson now facing Adam Kennedy. This is the 28th over. Played away this time the other side of point. This time third man comes into the action. Eventually fields it, keeps it to a single. Score moves on to 105. Lawson now on 20. And Danny Hogan, having reached that half century, is on 51. Lawson now. Coming down the track, playing him away again to the boundary rider again. Sorry, that's Hogan. Uh, he just takes the single, takes him on to 52, score up to 106. Getting close to that second drinks break now. That's Lawson facing Adam Kennedy. Smacked away again, boundary rider again, gets down, long barrier, makes sure he saves the boundary. Just a single. And that's the end of the over. Well, unofficial drinks. Both batsmen taking on liquid, and they need to in this heat. And in fact, most of the fielders probably need to. I'm surprised the umpires haven't just called for a drinks break and not just a break for these two. And we'll be back with the action in just a minute. So, starting the 29th over now, Jakob Molder. Molder. Brian Bannigan's made it back onto the ground, having checked in at home. He's either climbed out his bedroom window, or Nicolette has let him out for a pint. No sign of Freddie with him today. Still plenty of batting in this Pembroke side. I see Gavin Hoey. He's in some form this year. It's in the air, top edge, but it's safe. Graham Kennedy with that left arm. Good left arm he has there too. But that lofted shot behind square on the leg side brings Lawson another single. Moves him on to 22. Mr. Consistency indeed. Short one. Hogan dealing with the bounce exceptionally well. Dead ball. I don't know why it was a dead ball. Anyone else figure that one out? Anyone watching? Let us know on IamTheUmpire.com. Some funny people are humorous people out there. In the Twitter spear. But nothing about our game as yet. And certainly nothing that's included me. I might be 
just have a quick look and see if CIYMS are busy with the tweet board. CIYMS are regularly tweeting the score. Adam Kennedy now will continue from the nursery end. 20 past two. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. More people coming into the ground. Played away on the offside, and that's gone through. Extra cover for four glorious runs from Danny Hogan. Takes him on to 56, takes the score up to 112, and it's almost like Danny Hogan is targeting Adam Kennedy. It'll be a strong lesson learned from Kennedy. Get better with this sort of experience and exposure at the very highest level. This one's hit out to long on. Nigel Jones will field that one quite cleanly as it makes its way out to him. But again, Hogan trying to use the full face of the bat. by Lawson into the off side. Makes his decision to run quickly. And it was that quick, clear call that enabled both batsmen to make their ground safely. No hesitation. Another run onto the title. through the offside and that one's got away to the boundary as well and Hogan has opened up his shoulders there he is definitely targeting Adam Kennedy's overs as one way he can make hay as the sun shines I can tell you that the sun is shining now and it's beaming down all the tables in front of the bar area the Cyril spot all taken up a couple of benches on the wall taken up and most of the picnic benches down by the scoreboard corner They've gone as well. This time Hogan comes down the track a little bit to Kennedy. Tries to play him away. Beats everybody, all ends up. Gets the inside edge of the pat, pat, uh, bat, runs onto Hogan's pads, and that's enough to deflect it past the wicketkeeper, and it goes for another four. Not the end that Kennedy would have wanted to his over. It wasn't a bad over, but more runs flowing from it again.
โอเคครับOn your pictures, more just to continue now from St John's End. And that one's pushed through on the offside. Hogan picking up another single. Mulder's providing the sort of control that his captain is looking for. Shorter ball for Mulder. Cramped, cramped Lawson up, and that completes the 31st over. Just 19 to go now. Eight wickets in the shed. 125 now for two. Danny Hogan has moved on to 67. Theo Lawson on to 24. Again, I apologise for the lack of graphics on the screen. Unlike our usual games that are live scored on crit clubs, that allow us to have the Lovely graphics. Unfortunately today we have the Cricket Island in partnership with MV Play. Not allowed to help for clubs such as Pembroke streaming the game. See how this goes. Captain bringing himself on now, I think. This will be the six bowler used. Sight screen gets moved across. Watch your eyes. So coming on to bowl at the nursery end, John Matchett. If those guys score between you, well, we have to go with it until it's pointed out to us we're horribly wrong. Hogan plays the first one, up to mid-off, dot ball. Again, you get the feeling that Hogan is batting the freer of these two at the moment, and Lawson just content to play the supporting role. Yeah, good. Well done, 
Well, there's the third wicket. Just as I say, Hogan was willing to tie play his shots. He lets one go through, and it just takes the bail off middle and middle and middle and leg. Three down then, 125 on the board, and Hogan departs for a very well-made 67. He'll get a good round of applause as he comes back in. But that just brings to the crease Poonish Mehta. Poonish, who still suffering with his foot injury. And it hasn't stopped him bowling his spells, and it certainly hasn't stopped him batting. And here is the applause for Danny Hogan. Good applause from everyone on the ground. Danny Hogan departs for 67. Munish Petter now, Meta, he comes in. He's been in some form this season. Himself and Lawson have already put on two centuries. One by take. So, as well as our international viewers in Australia, we can now add the Caribbean, Caribbean to that. One James G. Murphy, enjoying himself early morning start on Turks and Caicos. So Punish Mehta now will face his first ball. Pembroke, three down now with 125 on the board. 19 overs remain in this innings. And this would be the stage where I'd normally start asking people, what do you think the finishing score will be? But you know what? It's pretty much impossible at this stage. Just playing that first ball out to covers. Cover fielder gets that. Dot ball. He rechecks his guard. Make sure he's absolutely happy with it. Played away again. Same fielder. Same result. Dot ball. Two balls remaining in this. 32nd over. Oh, that one. Big shot by Punish Mehta, and all he did was just get it to go a bull's width. Past leg stump, gets a single for it, and he's off the mark. Lawson retaking his guard, new bowler. The bowler made the breakthrough in his first over. Second ball. And that's all for Danny Hogan heading back to the hutch. Theo Lawson now. These two have batted well together. Very well bowled there by the CYM. Picking up that third wicket. <coughs> Danny Hogan just missing one, coming back at him. Just did enough to clip the leg stump. And remove a bail. Lawson and Peja, uh, Mate are now in the middle, having a chat. <laughs> Let's have a quick look and see what's happening in the women's game in Brady. And have a look, see if we can find any record of that or what's happening. 
Netherlands going quite well, having bowled Zimbabwe out for 132. Papua New Guinea only got 97 against the USA. So the USA will be hopeful of chasing that down, although at the moment they're 24 for four chasing 97, so that's going to be a close run game. Scotland are playing Nepal and require 121 more runs. And England are 249 for eight against India. Jersey beat Singapore by six wickets and Uganda beat Hong Kong by four runs. Oh, he's on to that. It was pulled down short by Mulder, and it was pulled away. Not a single. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Takes that one on the full, brings it round. Long leg, a wide long leg. Two balls remaining and Maud is over. Score moves on to 130. people coming into the ground well without wishing to put anybody off Simon Heaney walking down the wall Simon's gone for the t-shirt today don't know if he's been brave enough to go with shorts very few people in long trousers apart from of course the 15 people on the cricket pitch personally having a look at the regs I saw that legs don't specify what clothing you're to wear. But for my game yesterday, it was specified it had to be white. So out came the one pair of white shorts I have. Certainly made it a lot more comfortable for fielding. So yes, views in Australia and the Caribbean today. Anybody else got anywhere more exotic than that? Belfast, perhaps. Well, Marley McKinty, thank you very much for your tweet five minutes ago. John Matchett was man of the match at the NCU T20 Cup final yesterday. He also took five wickets in the semi final, so he's certainly on form here today. Not a bad guy to have as your sixth bowler. There's a guy who took six wickets in a semi-final recently and was player of the match as long ago as yesterday. So match it now against Lawson. Captain on captain. Big swipe there from Lawson. I thought we would have been due a drinks break by now. Could be at the end of this over. I, for one, wouldn't mind a drink at this stage, and I haven't done any running around. Sat on my bottom for the past 33 overs. Oh, my word. Lawson attempting to play the reverse sweep. It hit the back of his bat and just went past the keeper. The keeper was left flat-footed. Couldn't do anything about that. How can you prepare for that sort of shot? You can't. Well, it's a lovely day here today. <coughs> CIYMS will be right at home. Their ground also includes cricket pitch and rugby pitch. will be quite used to this. Etar just plays that one out on the leg side, takes the single, brings Lawson back on strike. The score moves on to 1 3 2. Drinks, 
drinks interval must be only moments away now. Lawson plays that one away, but there's no single there. Wasn't the ball he wanted. Wasn't the shot he wanted to play. Just played away, drawn square leg, take the single. That's a good over for John Matchett. He'll certainly be happy with what he's done so far. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is drinks. We will join you again in a few minutes. I'm sure Niall will fill up the drinks interval with highlights of this inning so far. Do you do well there? Three, two, one, two, 
Well, welcome back as we head into the third part of this first innings of this clear currency. Bob Kerr, Irish Senior Cup game between, well, the holders from 2019. Pembroke, much changed team since that cup final winning game. And CI YMS. Change of bowling now for CIYMS. They told us it was a change of bowling. What they haven't told me, which is the kind of sort of thing you need as a commentator, is who the bowler is. Niall will do his best now to bring up an up to date scorecard for me. Clear currency. Bob Kerr. It's just a shame that whoever looks after the Cricket Island website seems to have forgotten it's called the Bob Kerr. It's now the Irish Clear Currency Irish Senior Cup. I personally think the memory of Bob Kerr deserves to be noted. It's his name on this trophy. One bounce down to long leg. On the hook shot, dropped in short. Keith Dodgen, the opening bowler, back for his sixth over. CIYMS would be keen to knock over a wicket now. And that's why they've brought the opener back just after a drinks break. few changes in the field. Players coming back into the circle from the point boundary. And there's a trap set with wide long leg and deep square leg both on the fence. Finish Metar now with a helmet on. As Eli Clark takes Willow for another lap. Willow setting a good pace there as the two of them march past the nets. Yep, if you're not up to anything today, get yourself down to Sydney Parade. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. There's somebody else running around a field wearing polyester clothes. The single brings Lawson back onto strike. Yep, Pembroke filling up nicely today. What a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon watching some top quality cricket. Whether you're in the Caribbean, Australia, the Far East. Or Dublin 4. I hope you're enjoying our broadcast. Hopefully you'll stay with us. Change that. Oh, Lawson setting off for one.
Umpire's having a word with the batsman. One suspects it's about running down go. the wicket. Lawson heading off straight down. Oh, no. Straight down. Came back okay, but it was the original start of the run. I wonder if McElroy is going to win the British Open today. He's got himself in contention, which is the first time for a few majors. The CI. The CI Twitter account thinks that Pembroke are 20 30 runs shy at this stage. Two fielders get that, and wait, wait, wait is the call from Meta, and he's quite right. No single there. And that's the end of the 35th over. So with 15 overs to go, seven wickets still remaining. Three down, 135. Lawson has moved on to 30. And Punish Matar is now on four. And John Matchett again will come on with his off spin. Having seen off Danny Hogan in his first over. I told the catering we were three today. Because if I get my dinner and Amanda doesn't get hers, then we're left with a situation where I just, somebody has to cook for one later on. That's no good to man nor beast. Here's Eli off his lap. Thank you, Eli. You're welcome. Fancy doing a bit of commentary? Sure. Willow, come here. Sit. 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 Willow, sit. Lie down. Good girl. So we're turning on your light phone and say, for the first time today, Hello. Oh, there we go. Joining me in the commentary box, Eli Clark. How are you today, Eli? Good, how are you? I'm good. How could you not be good? It's a beautiful sunny day. There's a bit of a breeze to keep the temperature below boiling. And we're watching some good cricket. Yeah, Pam would just need to pick up the pace a bit, but they, pick up, they picked up the pace in the last over just before drink, drinks and after drinks. Well, they'll be looking to get after March and so. Lawson there, just trying to ease it down past the keeper. And all he did was offer an edge to the keeper. Did you have a game this morning? Yeah, in the hills. How'd you get on? It was the quarter-final of the cup and we won by eight wickets. So, semi-final of the cup? For... Qu we, that was quarter-final. So you're into the semi-final of the cup. Yeah. As Lawson plays a reverse sweep. He's being chased by the fielder. He gets to it, but he won't cut off the two. Two more to Lawson. Takes him on 32. So, um, which team was that then? Uh, the Minor Boys. Minor Boys. Let's see. Cricket Leinster just confused me. Yeah. <sighs> Punish and Dia, Dia really need to stay in to rescue the innings. Lawson doing his best just to lift that into the keeper's gloves with the reverse sweep. He's definitely looking for that down to third. Trying to put the bowler off of line a bit. Is that? There's no fielder down at third either, so Lawson's seen the gap. He's shown the bats, the bowler that that's what he wants to do. But he'd do it again, though. Third time in a row. Yes. And a straight oh. to the back of the point. He goes and the, 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 he didn't really need to do that. Well, that's the fourth wicket down, 138 on the board. Yes, Eli, having tried the shot a couple of times, he wanted to clear that man, but this time he just lifted it gently into his hands. A bit like Harry Tector's dismissal against New Zealand. Yes, and we know how that ended up. Yeah. So, CIYMS will be delighted with that. Another wicket falls. And Theo Lawson walks back with 32 to his name. It was a decent knock, but just one reverse sweep too many. Sprinkling of applause as Lawson returns to the hutch. And the new batsman 
Well, to me, it looks like Gavin Hoey. Yep. I'll bring up the over as well. This ball has been warned a couple of times, I think, for running straight down the pitch. No harm, no oh, harm as far as Pembroke are concerned, I suspect. They'll be looking for the pitch to be roughed up in any way yeah. for their bowlers for the second innings. been in fine form, scored a lovely century for the Irish universities in England in Cambridge earlier this summer. Also made his debut for the Leinster Lightning up in Breedy. Got his first wicket at an interprovincial level up there. Oh look, spider on the screen. Yeah, some company. That's pulled away ball. nicely from Poonish. Just a single there. Fielder on the boundary doing his business. Single to him. And that brings Hoey on to strike. <laughs> now Hoey will face his first delivery in this innings. Slip back in place. Jones goes to slip. There's a third man, but nobody else on the boundary on the offside. Trap still set. Two fielders quite close to each other. It's a beautiful shot. Oh. Excellent cover drive. Great placement. And let the field do the rest of the work. Beautiful shot. First ball he faces. It's a beautiful cover drive. And that's, exactly, that's exactly the confidence Gavin needs to go further into this game. Well, let's see if it's the sign. One one swallow does not make a summer. But that's not a bad start to put your first ball away for four, is it? Keith start dodging now. Another short one. This time Harry gets on top of it. The ball lands two yards away from him. Good bit of pace there from the bowler. He certainly wasn't going to put one in the slot to be smacked for four again, was he? No, he's approaching with a bit of a half volley and Ga Gavin Ho won't mess around with those ones. <laughs> Just guided down to third man. It is a fumble, but still a single. Gavin really just gets a single. Rotate the strike, it's good batting. Boundary in the over and just ticking the scoreboard along quite nicely. Mm. Absolutely right, if you like. Just keep the scoreboard ticking over. Gives the bowler something different to look at each time. Jones going back into slip again. He'd, have, he'd know a lot about some of these players being coach of the Leinster Lightning. Sure this one played away off the hip. Just be a single, but a good call from Hoey. Will that be leg buys? Yes, it will. We called it leg buys. Thought I heard two sounds. Must have been something just die pad, maybe. Eli did all that. You're welcome. You were, uh, she was attracting a lot of attention. I know, yeah. Short. Good ball to finish the over. How are you making the right decision and ducking underneath that one? Yeah, you get some bash. Bash and gloves away from the ball. It's a good duck. It's a right decision from Howie, but just a couple of laughs. Well, uh, Not going to risk chipping it up in the air. Water 
background. Mind you, with that sort of sound, it could also be Kieran Volker turning up in his van, his ute. Pete Twomley on the ground now, see down at the far end, taking in his first lap. Ford defensive. Finish a look to get single, maybe just to get oh. Harry on strike. John Marchant's bowling very well here. He's found his line and length. Not much Punish can really do about it. Pembroke Pro, Pro did very well in the white ball final earlier in the year. Yep, the Leinster Senior Cup, which came back to Pembroke. We beat Clontarf for the first time ever in a cup final. History making. This time Punish sees that the length is different, goes back to it, just plays it up to long on, takes the single. No fireworks as yet from the Pembroke middle order. All the fireworks so far really provided by Danny Hogan in his 67. So Gavin Hoey now. Just taking his time. Makes, wants to make sure he knows the field properly where the gaps are. Let's hit Slaps away. that one through the offside. The fielder will get to it, but he can't prevent the single, but he does save three runs there. Cummins fielding mid off. Hoey retains the strike for the next over. We're getting closer, closer to that 150 mark. Well. They might be close to 150, but in reality, they're going to need 200 plus. So we'll wait and see how Pembroke are going to take on this CIYMS bowling attack. We need to start going. 250, I'd say, is about, about right. Yeah. I mean, the outfield has been so quick today. Yeah. Got to get absolutely everything right. Graham Kennedy now coming back in with his left arm spin to Howie. Obviously, he's been working in that last over. See the hero of yesterday's fifth performance in the field, Peter Marshall. Took three wickets yesterday. Wasn't enough for the Pembroke fifths as North County got home. He's finding his line and length straight away. You want. Oh, beautifully fielded. Fielder at point going full length to make sure he got to that. And he did. It's about to say he'd want Howie driving the ball. Not on the back foot, that's very well fielded. Sweep that. Big. And that's gone all the way to six. Straight into Cyril's corner, right under Mick Sharp's plaque. That goes for six. That's a fine shot from Howie. That will take him on to 11, and it does bring up that 150 you were talking about. Would you like some cake? No, I'm fine. Thanks okay. for asking. Though. 152 now on the board after that. One shot. Kennedy just taken on that. I see Josh is, Josh is running loose. Seems to have escaped from Johnny.
Well, there's Johnny over there. Over at the Wheelfield Road gate. Single. After that. There's the dog is now over by the car park gate. Now, Pembroke don't need to take any big risks in this over after seven from just two balls. You can get a couple of singles off it. Maybe even one more boundary. No, it hasn't. It's a bit behind. Oh, that comes off the pads of Muta, and that's going to run down to the boundary despite two fielders getting close. Neither one of them will get there, and it's four leg buys. And that takes the score up to 156. Every run matters now for Pembroke in the search of a total that they can defend in the second half. Willie Clark signaling that one. Four leg buys. I still don't think the scoreboard's right. Laid away on the offside. Matchant does enough to save the single. And that's the end of the over. That's 39 gone, 11 to go. The score is now up for debate. What, what do you rec reckon Pembroke can get off the last 11? Well, if they go, it's a runner ball. That'll take them up to 220. Uh, so they'll be, they'll be looking for more than a runner ball, though, won't they? Yeah, if you're Pembroke, you'd almost hope for 70 off the last 11, 70 to 80. Guess you're a respectable total off this after the. Well, if they can pick up 77, say 7 and over. 77 put it up to 235, and that would be closer to what we consider a par score. Par in the dress on the sideline seems to be 250. Personally, I think anything over 240 will be defendable. Well bowled, well kept out by Hoey. Both teams missing some of their star players. Pembroke missing their Irish players. And well, Mark Adair also missing for CIYMS. Yeah, I didn't store a minute. Long on just takes a slight fumble, but it doesn't cost any additional runs. Pembroke need to up the run rate by three and over to get that one, 235. Currently going at 4.05 and over. Wait, excuse me. You'll be behind the bowler's arm. You'll be interrupting the game. Go. Great fielding there. Superb stop. That was a superb bit of fielding. Sets the standard for his teammates. It's the sort of fielding that captains are always delighted to see. It's pushed away on the leg side. Was the square leg umpire? It's just going to be a single. They've run the first and hard day. Maybe it's up to there. Possibly, possibly. But again, in this sort of heat, yeah. wearing polyester trousers, pads, box, thigh pad, shirt, probably an undershirt, helmet, gloves, maybe inners. Wearing an awful lot of clothes for an awful lot of temperature. And that one's hit down the ground. The fielder's not going to catch it. This outfield is lightning fast thanks to the work of Dale and his team. And that's four more. Tali smashes shot. that down the ground and that moves the score on to 164. Talk about the forward defensive, but after the forward defensive comes the on drive, which is played beautifully there from Gavin Hoey. Certainly was. Then, expect the next ball. Well, 
That's the over. That's 40 gone. The score's 164 for four. Punish Mehta has moved on to 18. Gavin Hoey has quickly moved on to eight. Ten overs remaining now. Again, a runner ball will get them up to one, two, 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 four. Yeah. Ten and over will get them up to. Oh, that's well, runner ball is. Ten, ten and over will get them up to two, six, four. So that's where they'll be aiming. Is. I hear every style. word, sir. <laughs> and not only me, there are people in the Caribbean listening to every word. And Australia. I haven't had anybody from Northern Ireland tell us they're watching yet. Kennedy's to continue from the St. John's end, the James Cresswell's end. That's scooped over his head, but nowhere near where he intended. Trying to manufacture some shots just to get the strike rotated. Cheeky shot there by Purnish, but if he executed that well, that could have raced away for four. Yep, but he didn't. This time he plays a pr proper cricket shot. It'll be the boundary rider who picks that up handily enough. Just another single. Keep the scoreboard ticking along. Brings Hoey on to strike. As we head into this last 10 over period, vital that Pembroke start to push the accelerator. Gavin Howey will certainly look to do that. Well, quick, certainly capable of doing that. Quick age off, not many balls. Plays that one deep out towards Cal, where the fielder brings it in. Field well spread on the leg side for Hoey. And even for Punish Meta. Two, three, four. Five, four field. Boundary rider on the offside. Boundary rider on the leg side. Wide, wide long leg. Just fielding in front of the bar, just about where the pool table is. Played away. Punish looking, just come down the track and maybe push it down to long off or look to go directly past the bowler over the bowler's head. Well, over the bowler's head is often a good shot. Very few fielders fielding behind the bowler. But this time he slashes it wide. Slight misfield, won't stop the single. And that's the end of the over. Kennedy gets through another one. Oh, that three, four off the over? Well, it wasn't that many. We need to start pushing the runs, Pembroke, if they want to get to that anywhere close to that 220 mark. Well, that to continue now from the nursery end. Uncle John Hoey on the ground today. Along with cuddly uncle Eddie Dwyer, proprietor of Ed Sports and long-time supporter. Ed Dwyer being the one who knows about the microphone next to him. We'll just lower that down so we don't get drowned out. There's the reverse sweep shot that Poonish Mehta has played exactly the way. Theo Lawson was looking to do that earlier. Executes that well. This time it's on the ground, unlike Theo Lawson's. Now don't forget, Eli, every time you mention Ed Sports, you'll get a discount next time you go down there. <laughs> 
Oh, that's pulled round, square leg. There is a fielder out there. He makes absolutely sure it's nothing more than a single. Just a little bit short. And mm. Punis just hit that away for a single. Probably needed to be hit for more if you're looking to push the runs. Maybe get that a bit backward a square or in front a square. There's a cow corner. Should be careful of that. Oh, he plays this one down to third. Willow. Good girl. This one hit firmly, but straight back at the bowler. He'll take that all day. Maybe get that a bit higher, and that could have been raced away for four. There's long off and long on, so can't do anything. He's gone it. big. He's gone very big. That is a massive shot from Gavin. Uh, from Gavin Hoey. What a super shot that was! Right down to the Wheelfield Road gate. Six runs. In fact, that might be a lost ball. We may have a few minutes while they go and retrieve that one. And the batsman won't mind getting a drink. No, the batsman won't mind. I think the two of them are thinking about grabbing a quick drink while they have a second. Gavin Howie, he's certainly been told probably to... Him and Poonish probably been told to put the foot in the accelerator and go big, and that's exactly what Gavin Howie's done. 15 off, not that many balls. No, he's doing a fine, fine job for a skipper. That's exactly what a skipper would have wanted, although lost ball might not be the way to go. Have no. they found it? They, they found a ball. Might even be the same one. Oh, that was a tremendous Whoa. shot from Gavin Hoey. Uh, Pembroke just need to, whatever they get, they need to back themselves. As I said to my team today, we were chasing 84, and I said, we've defended 84 before, so no matter what, just get the run. We've got 20 overs. Bash, bowl well, no matter what happens. Just do your best and hope that your best is good enough. No one, no one intentionally doesn't get runs or doesn't misfield the ball, so. Well, as so long as they're not called Hansi Cronia. <laughs> I'd like to thank all 41 devices that are tuned into this broadcast at the moment. Another one, this one's pulled down short and it will go out to the fielder on the boundary, just a single this time. But that six was a big help for Pembroke. No, That's what they need, boundaries. No, they can just not take that many risks out of, the, out of that last ball. Didn't need to have a big swing. Didn't need to try get that one for six, just get a single. Well, Wiley McKinty, he's enjoying the coverage from a slightly sunny lawn in Northern Ireland. Well, we welcome you to our broadcast, Wiley. I hope that you are enjoying that lawn sunshine. Just remember to stay properly hydrated. Plenty of sunscreen. And plenty of sunscreen. So, Graham Kennedy now to conclude, to continue with eight overs remaining. Only thing is, it's a bit risky going with the spinner and the short bounce to the leg side for Gavin Howie. Especially, he's been striking the ball exceptionally well. He's done well so far. And now, he's taken out. 
big club. Taking out the forward. He's looking to power out shots. Now he's going to be searching for those boundaries that Pembroke need. Played away. Oh, no run taken by Punish Meta. Just don't let that frustrate you, Gavin. I can see it in his face. Might get frustrated. But every, every run counts. It most certainly does. Lie down. Well, ball again by Kennedy. If Gavin Howie is, had the guts to do it, he could maybe try to come down the track, hit over mid, mid on, because you know, one on, one on, and that clear the road. It's a mid on. Yeah, but. And a long off. Be able to clear him, hopefully. He's hit it up to the guy at long off. It will just be a single. Now, Punish will look to. Do exactly what Gavin Howey did in the last over. He's got the shorter boundary on, on the leg side. Well, there are three men stationed on that boundary. It looks like four at the moment, but the short sleeve one is one William Dwyer leaning on the fence. Poonish just plays that out on the offside. Long off again comes in, keeps it to a single. CIYMS will be delighted with just singles at this stage. It's the boundaries they don't want to see. 20 runs away from that 200 mark. Well, he feels that 200 won't be enough. That's a super shot. One bounce into Cyril's corner. Rattling around down there amongst the spectators. Super shot from Four Gavin. Four for Gavin Hoey. Takes him on to 31. And that's the end of the over. So, so that's a better over for Pembroke. Just a couple of singles, two, three singles off that on the boundary. S around seven off it, and it's exactly what Pembroke needs to start doing. Take, Absolutely. Take, take, start taking more risks. Still, still got six more batters. Hi, Billy. How are you? Ah, oh, he's doing a great job here. Eli Clark, my co-commentator. Doing an absolutely fabulous job. Once again, you can get in touch with us on Twitter. Just include the at Craig PCC. So, the game against the Netherlands and Zimbabwe, it's important for the following reason. The winners of that game will go into Ireland's group in Hobart. And we now know that it will be Zimbabwe. Three months today will be Ireland's first match. Well, you couldn't ask for more than that, really. Zimbabwe up in your first game. Ireland playing a number of warm-ups in Sydney before they go on to Melbourne, before they go down to Hobart. Shorter ball there. Punish just not taking any big risk, just on along the ground to deep cover or sweep or whatever you want to call it for a single. Takes the score on to 187 for four. Howie now on 31. Howie now still on 31. Dot ball. Yes! Punish Mater run out at the non striker's end. He was backing up. Ball was hit back at the bowler. His hand deflected it onto the stumps, and the umpire has given him out. Punish doesn't look happy, doesn't doesn't look like he doesn't agree with that decision. Well, agree with it or not, he's on his way back. Oh, I think he's out there. Here's the replay. And let you make up your own minds. Your screen's bigger than mine. Can't see the ball. Yeah. And that's that's out. Bad in yeah. the air. That definitely looks out. 
Poonish won't be the happiest man at that method of dismissal, but... Sharp thinking from the bowler. So, next man out to the middle, Robin Kelly. Robin, who performed heroics in that White Ball Cup final you were talking about earlier, came in and played a fabulous cameo for Pembroke that day. Saw them across the line against Glontarf. Uh -huh. I'm fine. So seven overs remain now. One eight six for five is the score on the door. Robin Kelly's now gone out to join Gavin, Gavin Hurley. Hurley. Hit away for a single. Gets that end of the over, or will Robin Kelly have to face one? Oh, two to two go. Two to go in the over. I can see the umpire signaling. Yep. Always, when you're watching a game, keep an eye on the umpires. You can read much about the game by how the umpires are signaling and what they're signaling, and you can see how things are going. From the word go, Kelly. Robin Kelly. Oh! Oh, that was a horrible bounce just in front of the fielder. He'd gone down to stop it, and it took a hell of a bounce and went over his head. Four runs. From the word go, Robin Kelly has a sweep at one. It looked pretty routine, but I don't know. I just bounced maybe off the seam over the fielder's head. And Pembroke won't mind how they get their runs. They just want the runs. Robin Kelly, he's not hanging around. He went straight for that. And watch this. Just absolutely leapt at the fielder. In some ways, you'd have to say he was lucky he didn't, didn't hit him. Didn't yeah. end up in his face. It was such an unusual bounce. Unexpected bounce. Trying to find the ball. Yeah. In the bushes. Oh, the ball went over the wall. I suspect that's going to mean another ball. <laughs> See Kieran Sharp coming out of the bar with a jug of orange juice. Kind of suggests what sort of night he had last night. Kieran, who was here last night for the unveiling of the plaque on the wall over there, just outside the bar. Plaque commemorating Michael Sharp. That was unveiled yesterday. I was honoured and privileged to be asked to speak at it. Thanks to President Jim, he said a few words. Pembroke President Tucker said a few more. And then I was very fortunate, very lucky to be asked to speak on behalf of the playing members, I suppose, really. Nice little ceremony. I hope at some stage anybody from Pembroke watching today can come down and have a look at it. Oh, I'm loud enough anyway. <laughs> it's, it was a comparison yeah, thing. Yeah. So, Kelly having put that one into the gardens somewhat sneakily. And now, of course, that fielder out there is going to be very wary of anything bouncing in front of him. That would certainly be enough to keep you alert, wouldn't that? Yeah. So, Kelly should go again. He'll be looking for us this time. Oh, 
Well, that's gone down. It's going to be five wide. That is not what CIYMS wanted at this stage. Takes the score up to 196. A despairing, uh, come on, lads, to Mulder from the sidelines. Five wides. It's three runs. Move Pembroke up four runs away from the 200 mark. Kelly does very well just to keep that one out. And that's the end of the over. Yeah. That five wide's really not helping Mulder's figures. Afternoon. So, six overs to go, 36 balls. Let's ask you then. What's the number going to be at the end? I reckon 2.32. Well, 2.32 is the call from Eli Clark. What do you think out there in YouTube land? Is that enough? Has he got it right? I've watched this game before. What, you think this is recorded highlights we're watching now, is it? Yeah, definitely. All right. Slapped away through the offside. They'll be looking for two here. That's a good arm there, though. Just fumbled it. There could have been a chance for two there, but... But don't run on a misfield. No. Kelly asking for a change in the, the sight screen at the far end. Danny Hogan wearing nothing more than a pair of flip-flops and a pair of shorts, is accompanied by Joe Prendergast, who's slightly more modest, thank goodness. And all the kids down at the nets uh, helping out. Well, I see your brother down there. Yeah. You can't miss him with that top. No. Plus CIYMS players and supporters helping out. By the but time. Now, now Hogan and Prendergast are down at the far end. They'll only need to be down there for, well, six overs. Now, Howie to face. I'm gonna. Oh no, Kelly to face. I'll have a big slog at this. Well, certainly Kennedy's going to want him to be playing on the offside, and that's shown in the field that they've got. The captain's gonna trust Kennedy to ball long, to his field. A long off goes back to the net, and then on the offside, there's four in the ring. And on the leg side, there's an awful lot of room, but there's a long off, wide long on. As a slog, it is just single there. That and then two other fielders well. down the railway side. And that's a single to Kelly. And it brings Gavin Hoey on strike. Gavin Hoey is now on 33. Score on the scoreboard is showing 198 for five. Reaching the business end of this innings. Pembroke with five wickets in hand. Five and a half overs to go. No run. Good call from Kelly. No run there. Well bowled by Kennedy. This is Graham Kennedy, the left arm spinner, as opposed to Adam Kennedy, who was bowling medium pace earlier on. That is very big. That's into the row, into the tower and goes over the nets. There aren't too many shots you see go over the nets. That's a big hit. Gavin Howey coming down the track, clears the nets by a good bit. Clears the, sh the new shed. How far do you reckon that one went as a six? Oh, I couldn't tell 60, you, but... 70. 70, 80 yards, something like that. That would be a six on any ground. Well, certainly on many grounds. Oh, this one, he hits up into his helmet. Just getting an edge on that one. But 200 is up for Pembroke now with that six. The score's moved on to 204 for five. Gavin Hoey. Some of our viewers may remember him from 
when he was a lot smaller and a lot younger. Sweeping that, they look to get a single. Gavin will be on strike. I think for the next ever, yes, he will. Over up. 205 for five after 45. Thir There's Howie's shot, you can see. It wasn't exactly uh, cricket. It was as much baseball shot as anything else. But it certainly had the desired effect. It bounced right over those. It, well, it didn't even bounce. It just went right over those nets. And then one he hit himself in the head with. So it looks like Adam Kennedy is coming back now. Now I'm looking at five overs to go. I think Dale Campbell will get a bit more. Or is this is this dungeon again? Dungeon again. Looking back. Now, I think Campbell will get a bit more than 232. Uh, you're changing your guess now, are you? No, I'll, I'll stick with 232, but... Yes, and Graham Kennedy has now finished his 10-over spell. He took one for 51. And he had a few occasions where he was a bit unlucky not to get a second wicket. So Keith Dudgeon, he's coming back into the attack now. The last five overs. Well, if you're a Pembroke viewer, supporter, you'll be looking for some fireworks from these two bats. And if you're a CIYMS, you'll be looking for a couple of wickets to fall just to slow that rate down. It's short, it's pulled out square. Winnie Clark, the umpire, has to move quickly. It's just a single to that arm out there. You know, but for that one, for, for it, he didn't hit it as well. There could have been two on there if he didn't hit it as well. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. I see Brian Bannigan back for the third time today. This time he's got his chaperone with him. Freddie holding Daddy's hand. Now we're going to see if Kelly can wield this bat to the same effect as he did in the Leinster Senior Cup final, where he scored runs very quickly. Hit the ground there. Good ball, wide Yorker. Can't squeeze it away. Again, this thin layer of cloud, just not dropping the temperature too much. Very hot in Ireland. Well, it's hot. Let's not say it's very hot. Hot for Ireland, yes. I think is the phrase. Anything over 20 degrees, people start to melt. Oh, Full toss. Kelly is onto that quickly. Doesn't quite middle it. Full toss. But he gets a single for it. Gets down the other end. You can see he slammed his pad there in anger. Thought he could have cleared the rope there. It certainly felt like he could. Hi, Freddie. Freddie Bannigan joining us briefly. That's gone off nowhere near where how he intended. Had to run all the same though. Um, Leg by. Another one onto the total. 208 now. 208 for five. Pembroke players rushing to do side screen. Well, this is the disadvantage of the left handed, right handed combination. Keith Dudgeon has decided to go round the wicket to him. And that just might suit Kelly. Might difficult bowling to left hand, right hand. Might mix your line and length up. Makes it difficult for the bowler. Well, Dudgeon's liable to go short again. Well, he's gone very long. The almost full toss there that he misses out. Has a swing but can't connect with it. Yep, well, when you're expecting somebody of this pace to be pitching it in front of you, 
Very hard to make the adjustment when it doesn't bounce. Kelly again, big swing, goes like wide. That's the end of the over. That looked That's like 46 gone. Go ahead, Eli. That looked like a slower ball there. Yeah, it's quite deliberately bowled into the pitch. Kelly couldn't get hold of it. So with four overs left, 208. Your 232 is coming back into play here, I feel. Oh, just one good good over. Can promise. Hambrook. Look at that two two four you can mark. To ten to twelve. So four overs to go now. Late one last night, Wed? No? Home by quarter past? Spinner on. Yep, Mulda now from the nursery, uh, from the John's end. Short a ball, get a single there. Slapped out to the fielder, who does enough to keep it to a single. That brings Kelly on to strike. Kelly and the leg spinner now. You've got to think that Cal Corner, there are some people sat down there in deck chairs. He's moved a bit now. I suspect he's cleared it. Ed Dwyer on his, his little stroll. Spending a couple of minutes in front of the camera. So, Mulder to Kelly. Goes for the big shot. Comes off the thigh pad. Umpire. Caught by the keeper. Question was asked. Umpire was quite keen that it had come off the thigh pad. Not that. Bigger of an appeal. Well, not much of an appeal. You can at see all. where he was aiming, though. He's aiming. There's a short third man. A short long leg. A short long leg? That would just be a. Not anymore, there isn't. No, there's a long, long leg now. <laughs> so three out on the leg side. The fielder on the off side comes into the ring. This is good bowling by Mulder. He's not letting Kelly get any space at all. Kelly can see how much room there is on the leg side. He's definitely looking. But it's also a very big boundary to clear. And this time he goes round the corner. He's going to be looking for two, but there isn't two there. And Hoey sends him back. Owen is on 41 at the moment. Kelly on seven. How we will look to have some more fireworks. There's been no standout performance by Pembroke with the bat. Danny Hogan, best of the lot so far with 67. Everyone sort of got in. Oh, he's played that behind the keeper. He has ramped it. It's going to be four there. Improvised shot from Hoey gets another four. That takes the score up to 214 and takes Hoey up to 45. I wonder if that was premeditated by Hoey. I'd say it was. I'd say he's got that in his mind, that if there's one there that he can't play a big shot to, where else can he get runs? Smart thinking. Oh, smart thinking when it comes off. Thinking outside the box. He's gone big, he's gone straight, and nobody's catching that. It's onto the roof of the nets, and that's another six, and that's Gavin Hoey's 50. He'd be delighted with that, signalling back to the sidelines. Bat raised, 51 on the board now for Hoey. 
Three overs to go. That's not many balls, though. And like that, a good over for Pem. Well, decent over for Pembroke, should I say. Well, they're up to 220 now. Anything over this. If they could pick up another 20 from these three overs, it would be very useful. 240, 250 was considered par on the sidelines during the first innings, certainly amongst the CIYMS supporters. So we'll wait and see how happy they are at the end of 50. Dodging again now from the nursery end. Kelly on strike. That it's going to be a single. They're going for two. They're going for two. Though no, they're not. That throw from the boundary again has saved so many runs for CIYMS. Brilliant fielder down there. Is that Graham Kennedy, I wonder, because the left arm is just so strong. Two one on the board, 17 balls remain. It's a short one, and Hoey plays what is basically a tennis shot to it, and this time Kelly Speed will make sure they get back for the two. Gavin Howey, shorter ball, comes down the track, in, interestingly. He just slapped it, really, didn't he? Yeah. Willow. Sit down, Willow. Sit. Sit. Th three from it from the over so far. Oh, ramp. Well, great shot Whoa, from Gavin Howey. Howey again. Go on, I know you, you describe what he did there. He the a shorter ball actually and he goes for a ramp and he gets it. Not that not a great connection, but enough to just get it over the keeper and for a four. And it runs away to the boundary. Four more onto the total. Two two seven now for five. Gavin Hoey moves on to fifty-seven. Well, he's got a license to thrill now. Bowler is unwilling to take him on again with that ramp Goes shot. For two. And they pull up two. two that time. 2-2-9 two, two, now. See, having seen the having seen that scoop shot and that ramp shot, they know that Hoey will play anywhere over. 245 is looking on for Pembroke now. Three. 360 batting from Hoey. Another short one, and that's another four. That's going to run away. Will the fielder get there? He will. It will just be a single. Well, that was a reaction shot to a very short ball. That's the short one for the over. Saying so that's one for. One for the over. Sit. Willow, sit. Willow, lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Good girl. Kelly won't mess around. He won't. He won't do anything. It's only one shot. He's going to be a trying now, isn't there? Yes. The big shot. Big slog. So, 2.30 on the board now. And you like your guesswork has been PD. Pretty good. Another full toss gets through. Kelly doesn't connect with that. That's the end of the over. There are now two overs left. Keeper nearly made a mess of that. That could have hit the helmet and could have been five penalty runs, actually. Eli, just keep an eye on the dog. Yeah. And 
I'll be back in just a minute. Perfect. Spinners to continue. With two overs to go, Gavin Howie will mess around with any shots he'll look to go for the boundaries. Will he try the ramp shot or the reverse sweep, anything wild like that to save her? Or will he just go for the big slog to the leg side or down the ground, as he's seen twice in the last couple of overs? One's gone on top of the net and one's cleared the net by a long, long way. Here we go. Howie. Play that to the off. Like almost halfway. Extra cover. Get a single. Kelly will be on strike for this one. He'll have a big heave to the leg side. Already eyeing up the left the leg side. Go down the track and that'll miss the keeper. That'll go away for four. Four buys. Well, that's very gratefully received by the Pembroke side. Takes a score up 235 for five now. And this is the 49th over. Pembroke looking to get 240, maybe 245 even. Apparently right. this dog likes to taste of sun cream. My prediction isn't... Just quite right. Oh, you're not far off. Hit away. This time, Kelly gets it out to the leg side. He's looking for the second, but again, that arm from the boundary. It's been accurate, it's been fast. And it has saved plenty of runs here today. Pembroke getting now to a total that they will feel they can defend. Kevin, how are you going to look for the big shot here? He'll certainly be looking big. And he's got big. That is huge. That has gone a long way. They won't be getting that ball back. I think that's six on any ground in the world. The umpire had a ball ready. You can see with Gavin Howey's stance, the bat was almost like baseball. 2-4-2. Two, that, two. that goes a long way. 2-50 is looking very possible for, for Pembroke. Well, with Howie in this sort of form and this mood, 250 certainly is on the board. Switches. Oh, it went big. It was a quicker ball from Kennedy. Well bowled. Pushed through. Didn't execute that just right, but if that did come off. There's two fielders. There's like almost two points there, so will he try it again? Goes for the big heave. Drives that one down the ground. Just for a single, though. Yep. That brings be... Kennedy back on strike. Or, no. Yes. Oh, It's no. the end of the over. So, with one over remaining, the score has moved on to 243. And that 250 is certainly well within reach now. We need seven off the over. And they'll run nearly everything that they can and go. That's... I've no idea what's in there at that shot. Well... <laughs> It's up there somewhere, and it landed over there somewhere. That's Here. about as good as you can say for that shot. A hell of a shot. Gavin Hoey, big six. That was a big help for Pembroke. It's got them over that 240 that we said we were looking for. 250 is very possible. Seven off, or eight off the last over, Pembroke will look to get. Even if they get 249, still have... It would mean that if Pembroke get 249, it would mean that CIYMS would need five and over from the start. Doesn't sound particularly hard, but with, with Pembroke getting wickets, 
It will slow the run right down. That's caught. Oh, that's well caught. Keeper kept his eye on that, and that's the end of Gavin Hoey. That's a fine knock from Hoey. Eager also departs for 67, which is exactly the same as Danny Hogan earlier in the innings. And he went for the big shot, just took the edge of the bat, and the keeper just kept his composure and took a handy enough catch, I think. It's a good knock from Gavin Howey. Need, Pembroke needed that quick fire, and he's done exactly what the Lawson would have wanted him to do. Absolutely. It's a round of applause. What a super knock from Gavin Howey. 67. He's put Pembroke into a position that they now have a score they might defend. Well batted, Gavin Howey. And now this is Paul Lawson, right? It looks like Paul Lawson. He'll look to go big, won't Well, I think anybody going in at this stage has two things on their mind. Hitting hard and running fast. Yes. Won't, won't have time to settle in at the crease, just have to go from the word go. Up to 46 viewers now. That might be the highest we've had all day. Well, that's something that now I will check. CIYMS Twitter account working overtime and working very quickly. Interestingly, with the new batsmen, still have some fielders outside in places where Dio will look, or no, not Dio, Paul will look to hit. Well, Paul undoubtedly looked to get Kelly on strike at least. Gets it round the corner. Do that very Just well. Just a single to call no to the second. Now Kelly will look to go big. He's nine. All on particularly big runs, but he's a bit more settled in than Paul. Dudgeon coming in from the nursery and just to complete this last over. Big LBW appeal turned down by Azam Ali Beg, leg by. That, looked, that brings that looked, Lawson back on strike. That looked out to me. We'll see it on the replay, but I'm not a professional umpire. If you watch it there, no, we'll point out to you. Oh, probably just going down like, yes, yeah, Niall says, angling in. We'll get you, we'll get you, do you a test. We'll show you different deliveries. You can tell us which ones are out. That's fine. Niall's LBW attack. Paul Lawson there, tapping that one down past the keeper. No fielder down there. Four more onto the board, 2.49. Pembroke. Who will be the happier of the two sides at this first innings over? Well, I would be Pembroke. I would actually be Pembroke because 250 isn't a bad score and considering where they were 80 off, what, 20 overs, yeah. I'd be very happy if I were Pembroke. But runs well, again, on the board. It's runs on the board that help. And that's 250 up for Pembroke. At one stage it seemed unlikely they were going to get that far, but they've done very well. They've dragged it up there to what... CIYMS crowd were calling a par score halfway through the first innings. Well, if this is par, we know we're not playing golf because they don't want to end up under par. No, they don't want to end up over par. And speaking of golf, the Open is going on right now. Yes, it is. Victor Hovland I'm sure versus... we'll be talking about that in the second innings. Rory McIlroy. And this is hit go. back over the bowler's head. It'll be collected by the fielder, but Lawson is going to pick up the second. 2-5-2. Two, two. The fielder didn't look like much... Like That concludes the innings. Pembroke have scored 252 from their 50 overs. Robin Kelly on 11, and Paul Lawson on 6. 67 for Danny Hogan, 67 for Connor Hoey. Gavin Hoey, sorry. Yes, thank you, Dale. And I, speaking of Dale, he'll come on and do some work off the pitch. 
So the players make their way off the pitch. Our technical department. Our technical department will take you through the highlights of the first innings. And myself and Eli are going to take a well-deserved break. Thanks for joining us for that first half, and we'll see you again later on. Thank you. Why is it when we stop commentating, the viewing figures jump by 10%?
Well, welcome back, Sydney Parade, Sunday afternoon. CI Warehouse setting off in pursuit of the 253. They need to reach the next round of the Bob Kerr Cup, the Clear Currency Irish Senior Cup, the Bob Kerr. So, Punish Meta, as we haven't seen him for a couple of months, bowling off a full run up. First ball, diving in front of the wicket keeper. And the, we're underway. Sounds like you've just run back with the dog. I have. I did a lap, big lap, and then I saw the players taking the field. I thought we had another 10 minutes or so. But they're back early. 19 of you stuck through the break. Thank you. And some of you, no doubt, have... Oh, that's a big shot. He's gone big. He's gone wide. It's gone down to the offside boundary. It's going to reach the rope. Four runs straight away. And that's a fine start for CIYMS. They'll be happy enough with that. Batsman's names, Niall. Any chance we could bring that up at some stage? Well, this guy certainly isn't hanging around. He's taken on Puta Punish twice quickly. Eight off two balls. He's off to a flying start. Ross Adair. He's moved on to eight. His partner, Chris Doherty, wicketkeeper in the first innings. And after three balls, there's eight on the board, and it's already forced a change in the field. He's gone big again. Another four. This time it's a six. Takes the score into 14 off four balls. One has to think Ross Adair, he's keen to get back to Northern Ireland as soon as possible. He's intending to win this straight away. Three fours. When you think that Punish Meta. Hmm? Do anything? No. This one goes down the leg side. Ross Adair leaves that alone. We'll have that ball again, plus another run onto the total. Now, I think the total's 14. But so far, well, I thought that last shot was a six. Two fours and a six is 14. And yet they've put it up as three fours. And a wide makes it 13. I thought it was signaled as such. I may have been wrong. Well, Willie Clark walking away from that so quickly as to show that it wasn't out. Yep, the live scoring says 15. Yep. So I don't know if the scorers down below are aware of the discrepancy between the two. Whipped away off his legs. It's gone round to the leg side. It's being chased down by Joe Prendergast. He saves it. And Pooh Sharma completes the job by getting the ball back into uh, Theo Lawson, who's keeping wicket for Pembroke today. And carnage it is. Wide there from Poonish. And Adair was onto it straight away and smacked that one through the offside. No fielder on the boundary there for that one. It says 15, and now the scoreboard says 15 as well. Oh. 
It's an appalling system. It's an appalling system. Yeah. You have to refresh it. It doesn't automatically update. It's nigh on impossible to find it to start with. This is Cricket Ireland. It is. It is. I find that Crick Clubs, which Leinster use, is far more friendly and also allows Niall to pull the figures down to put onto graphics. Whereas NV Play doesn't, unless you have NV Play written across the middle of the screen and pay your fee, I suspect. Plus, the other one updates automatically, doesn't it? It does. It does. Still, that's what Cricket Island went with, and they're happy with it. Just not Leinster. Now to open the bowling for Pembroke from the nursery end, Ryan Hopkins. Ryan, who's not played much cricket this year, he manages to make it back for the Irish Senior Cup. Very special and close to his heart, that win in 1919, uh, 2019. This one played out on the leg side. They'll take the single. It's well fielded in the ring by Joe Prendergast. One off the first ball. That brings Ross Adair on to strike. Tyler's just doing the right thing. While Adair's in this mood, it's the way to go for Pembroke. Ryan Hopkins. Gavin Hoey coming back to the fence at... Long off. Yes, protector of the, of the commentary box now, Gavin Hoey. Smacked away through the offside, and there's another four runs to Adair, and he is not hanging around. You're seeing the fireworks and seeing them early. here at the moment. A flicked away. Punish Meta with a fine bit of fielding. Sees the end of that over from Ryan Hopkins. Two overs gone. Oh no, left-hander on. in front of him again. Chris Doherty now. Plays it away on the leg side. It's heading out towards the boundary. Joe Prendergast is chasing it down. And that's a fine sliding stop up and throw from Joe Prendergast. Yeah, a large number of changes to this team since that cup final win in the hills, 2019. And Hopkins does get out of that over. It's 25 on the board after two. CIYMS batting as if they want to get home in time to see Songs of Praise. <laughs> Two umpires now conferring. Two overs gone. And Punish Motar will continue. And he'll be bowling to Ross Adair, who took a great liking to him in the first. First over, and already out of that 252, CIYMS have reached 25 for no wicket. And Ross Adair is 21 of those 25. Hiya, Connor. Yeah. 
Again, his away. Again, four more runs. It's only fetching that. That went racing way to the boundary, and that takes Rossadere onto 25 already. This is brutal batting. Certainly worth hanging around to watch if you're in the ground, or worth tuning in to watch if you're not. Punish Mantar now from the St. John's end. Good crowd watching him today. Saws the batsman coming down the track. He's pushed it out wide on the leg side. It's well fielded by Pusharma. And he gets that back in. Two more to Adair. Two more to the total. Another big, big hit, and this one goes for six. And... Oh, no, this one goes for four. Obviously, he didn't middle it as much as he wanted it to, but that takes him on to 29 and takes a score on to 33, and we're only in the third over. He's definitely taking a liking to this bowling. Whew. Again, handed out there. Punish Mehta, he's looking to complete this over and lick his wounds. Adair comes down the track again, doesn't get half as much of it as he wants to, but it still might make it to the fence. Joey Prendergast there, throwing himself to the floor. He saves a run, but it just shows the level of commitment there is amongst the Pembroke players. Super piece of fielding that. Amanda, if you're going down that way and you see Brian, you might ask him to pop up to me at his convenience. So, 35, 38, and we're still in the third over. A little swarm of bees. One feels it won't be long before Pembroke actually have to call in somebody to do something about the amount of bees and wasps on the ground. Those bushes down beside the containers on the junior rugby pitch, absolutely full of nests. just bouncing in front of Lawson behind the sticks, but that was an edge, but it hit the ground first. But that's the first sign of vulnerability amongst these batsmen. Up until now, they've been impervious. Short one, Doherty gets on top of it too much, plays it into the ground, it just runs out to point. So three overs gone, 38 on the board, and CYM are rushing off in a hurry. Did you disconnect us briefly? Nope. Just looking at the drop in figures before it regain the figures. There you go, sealed up. All oh, right. <laughs> no. Well, 54 devices out there now. Set two. CI YMS's innings in this clear currency. Bob Kerr, Irish Senior Cup. Ryan Hopkins now to continue for his second over. That one's clubbed up to long off. Gavin Hoey with a very neat tidy. 
And a throw down the far end. That's a lovely throw. Now, with Doherty facing the left-hander, oh, he goes back into the ring. Offside this time by Doherty. He's definitely the quieter of the two, but he's providing fine support. Rossadere is certainly crashing the ball around the place. Played away on the offside. JJ Garth is the fielder there. How Pembroke need him to be fielding like he did in that. Leinster Senior Cup semi-final where he affected four runouts. This time does he just plays it away. JJ Garth again. Getting the full face of the bat, certainly not hitting it with the middle. Oh. It's a much better over from Hopkins. I think it helped that he had Dodgy at that end. Wouldn't let him get off strike. So with four overs gone, the score is 39 and the run rate has fallen below 10 for the first time this innings. So, Punish once again will take on Ross Adair. In the last two times we've seen this, it's definitely Ross Adair, Ross Adair who's come off the stronger. He's on 35, and we're only in the fifth over. Start of the fifth over. Comes down the track again, pushes that away. Just be a single, though. These two bowling, Poonish Mehta and Ryan Hopkins. Also have Poo Sharma, Joe Prendergast in the scene department. And you've got Lawson with his off spin. Played away. Oh, just off the top of the stumps and well backed up by Dermot Tucker. Oh, that could have changed the face of the game if they got a dare on a run out like that. My goodness. Fine bit of fielding from JJ Garth, and they may think twice about taking another one there. He did miss. Now, dare against Punish again. Yeah with Amanda. Played out in the offside, just takes a single again. His strike rate is fairly high at this stage. He's on 35, his strike rate is over 250. Delighted to say now. Joined in the commentary box. Past, past president or current president? Past president. Past president of CIYMS. Brian, good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to be here. Lovely day. Oh, it's all happening here. The LBW appeal was turned down by Willie Clark. JJ Garth again missing the stumps by millimetres. 
Good game so far. So far, good game, yes. And Pembroke posts a, a good total here. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough ask for our guys, I think. Well, the way Ross Adair has gone off, he must have a bus to catch, is he? <laughs> this is the way he bats. You know. Well, it's working for him so far. So far, yeah, he's, he's got scores. Of, he's got 180 this year. Two more hundreds and maybe an, uh, an 80. He got an 85 off 25 goals against North Down. So he doesn't hang around. He's, does no, he? he doesn't hang around. No. And he had a good trip down to Dublin this morning. Yes, we had a great trip down. Yes, stopped off in the. <coughs> Apple green, just for some light refreshments. Light refreshments, yes. yes. Breakfast. Yes. Breakfast. So and your your term as president all happened during COVID, didn't well, it? Well, yeah, four years. So I missed missed two of them. Missed anyway. two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. But I enjoyed it. A slower ball from Meta, and that's played out in the offside. Dare was very quick onto that. One feels that's going to run away to the boundary. And it hops over the rope, but it's four more runs. That takes him into 41 and the score up to 47. Good uh, value for your runs here today. Oh, my goodness. It's a fast outfield. Fast outfield. You can see it's starting to burn now for the lack of water. Yeah. I'm sure the groundsman would like nothing more than a quick deluge of, yeah. of rain tonight. Yeah, hopefully after the game's finished. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that always the way? Now, where are they taking that picnic table? Was it behind the bowler's arm, no? No, it was well tucked away. It was behind the television. I, well, I suspect it's their way of finding somewhere to sit. I think you'll find that, yes, they've now sat down at that table. Good view from there. Could be a dangerous place to be. It could be the way Rossiter is batting anyway. As well as Paul Lawson's off spin, of course. Gavin Ho will have his leg spin. So plenty of options for Pembroke. And somehow they've got to break up this partnership. 47 and we're in the sixth over. It's gone high. Good and catch. it's taken by Jerma Tucker and they needed that. Good catch. Had to steady himself, a long way to go backwards, but he kept his eye on the ball. That's um, Chris Doherty. Chris Doherty. He, uh, you know, I think he was trying to emulate yeah. Ross and yeah. uh, trying to break the shackles yeah. and uh, instead got underneath it, skied it. And then once again, this, this game has never become a foregone conclusion for either side. No. Um, I mean, uh, the first innings went very well at the start for CIYMS, um, but there was some and fine batting. Clawed, clawed it back in the, in the sort of middle period of the innings, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of that was down to yes. Gavin Hoey and his yep. 67, yep. Danny Hogan and his 50, 67. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is John Matchett coming into bat now. John got him on in the match in the uh, T20 final yesterday at Waringstown. And, and amazingly, none of your guys are suffering with hangovers today. No. I certainly, no. if I'd won a T20 Cup <laughs> yesterday, I'd be commentating from a very oh, dark room. Jonesy, uh, Jonesy just told the guys, go home. Yeah. <laughs> and what Jonesy wants, Jonesy gets. Well, that's the way it should be, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. So, highlights of your presidency? Well, winning four trophies out of five. That's, that's not bad, yeah, is it? Uh, winning the Senior Cup again. Two Senior Cups. Um, and qualifying for... Wow. Qualifying for the... Uh, the European Championships. Yeah, yeah the ECL, which, which didn't happen that year. Unfortunately, that was. <laughs> yep. Oh, well, that's yeah. another big blow. You won't be fetching that one back. That's gone into back gardens. Or at least it's travelling up towards Sandy Mount Dart Station now. Yeah. And it's not on a return ticket, that's for sure. I think they'll be serving lunch on that one. Oh, yeah. That's a big hit. And that's 50 up now for CIYMS. And that's sort of breaking the back of the challenge of the chase. And Pembroke are going to need to get a dare and get him soon. So four cups out of five. So what are the five cups? You, you, the NCU you Senior the Cup. Senior Cup. We won the league. Yep. We won the uh, NCU T20. 
Excellent. And we won the Irish T20. Brilliant. Yeah. And Brilliant. The year, and the year before that, we had won the league and the cup. So the thing's going well in CEO. It's Why? going well. It is. It's going well. We have good infrastructure now as well. I mean, we have two, two guys, 16-year-olds, playing today and playing a good part in the game. So we're moving well, in the right track. You know? Well, that's, that's the way forward, isn't it? Yep. It's developing your own players yep. rather Absolutely. than... Rather than getting them from elsewhere, we have a, we have a new so a new coach there, um, Ian Butler, who played for New Zealand. Yeah. So he's now director of cricket. Oh, excellent! So he's he's at CI, uh, along with uh, doing some work for the Knights as well. So he's a good guy. Well, that's good to have. We haven't quite gone as far as director of cricket here yet. to kind of give it a name, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Here's your job. <laughs> if you want to write it down in your CV, that's it. Yep. So. New balls, please. Absolutely. And new balls required after that massive six for Madeira. It's taken him to 47. And again, Pembroke Mead. Something could happen, yeah. otherwise he's going to finish this in. He could finish it very quickly. Double time. Yeah. Well, Hopkins left that one in the slot, and Adair didn't need a second invite for that. No, he doesn't need us twice. <clears throat> Gone big again. And this time it's caught. Paul Lawson takes the catch along on, and that's the end of Ross Adair. That's a super catch. Good catch, yes, good catch. Oh, he made sure of that. And that's a that's a shame for Ross Adair. He falls on 47, just three of what would have been a fabulous half century. But uh Two, wow. wick, two wickets in quick succession. That's this game is turning left yeah, and right all the be. way through. Yeah, yeah. Kennedy coming in. Yeah, we were talking about him earlier. Has he been capped? Well, he played. He played over in Bristol a couple of weeks ago. Ended up with, got a hundred not out. That was the, the game. Wolves game, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he's been in the senior squad, hasn't he's been he? In the senior squad for a while. Excellent. Yeah. He bowled very well today. Good cricketer. Yeah. Very good. Very, very good. Very calm sort of guy. Well, you have to be when you're a spinner and you see the ball disappearing over your head yeah, yeah. an awful lot. Especially if you play up in the northwest in the small grounds. For a long yeah. Time, you know, so. Yes, indeed. As we were saying earlier, actually, the Irish women playing the Australian women today in Breedy. That kicked off at four o'clock. There you go. There's the replay. Paul Lawson is delighted with that. You can tell from how he strides after catching it how how pleased he is. So. Yeah. Super catch. So, how, how many years have you been involved with C CIYMS? 1973. 1973. <laughs> wow. Man and boy. <laughs> and you spent many years on the first team. Quite a lot, yeah, quite a few. Captain the first over two, uh, two different periods of time. Yeah, once you do it once, you do tend to get asked back again. Asked back, yeah. Okay. Signal to wide. Yes, I, I was here when I was working in Dublin. I played at the time. Do you remember Chris Kugelein? Yes, played indeed. Here. Yes, I remember. He New Zealand there. International. Yes, that's right. He was here at the time, so uh, he was here. I played a bit. Not on the first, obviously. That was early 80s? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah there would be a few players down here who would still remember Chris. Steve McCarthy would be one. He he would have played at the same time as Chris. Yeah, he's good. He was a good cricketer. Wasn't he? Ah, he wasn't bad. Yeah. I don't like <laughs> to say too much about Steve on air. <laughs> Another wide. It's still drifting out there. Alan Be uh, Ali Beg is not giving any leeway on that. He didn't in the first. All. Didn't in the first innings either. So no, he's consistent. No. Young uh, John Matchett's very good, good cricketer. Nice, nice bat. As you say, player of the match in the yeah. T20 Cup final yesterday. Yeah. That's better from Hopkins. There's a bit more life about the Pembroke side now. Yeah. They've got rid of Ross Adair. 
1973. And uh, many honours while you were playing? Um, <clears throat> well, two or three two or three promotions, and uh, we won a, a Junior Cup, which was... Oh! At the time, it was the last time the Junior Cup was ever played with three innings. So that was nice for us, you know. Yeah, that sort of cricket has gone now, it's isn't gone, it? Yeah, yeah I think it's a loss to the game, but you can understand why as well. Oh. These days it all has to be done in 20 minutes. Yep. It's the attention span of people these days. And there's actually four or five of the, of the, the team that won the Junior Cup down here today, so it's nice. There's a wee bit of continuity there too. It's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice when people who played a while ago are still involved, even if it is as a spectator. Mm. Um, and what, you couldn't think More of, of a critic. Yeah. Armchair critics. Yeah. The side pocket of the bag, I think, are the keys. So, who's your president now? Um, it's uh, Alan Nagelway. He's he's here today as well. Played he played in that Junior Cup final as well. Oh, so, just racing past the edge of Kennedy's bat there. So, uh, yeah, yeah he's, he played there to, in, in in that Junior Cup final as well. He's he's still playing. He he plays for the lads and dads. Okay, too. So. So we have that fists here. Yeah, yeah well, we have five teams <laughs> going at the minute as well. So. Oh. Oh, the complexion of this game changing completely with the departure of Ross Adair. Yeah. This guy, this guy can bat. Kennedy, lovely. Left handers just look better. Yeah, they do, they do look better. That's right. Well, hopefully we'll bat pretty deep today anyway, so... Well, Pembroke certainly did. Yeah, they did. Well, Ryan Hopkins, who has centuries opening for Pembroke, was down to bat number nine. Yep. Mainly on the side as a bowler today. Big appeal, but yeah. a late appeal, I'd have said. People joined in. Right. <laughs> yes. It sounded good from somebody else, so they, they get but a they, little shout as whole, well. The game has just changed, hasn't it? The whole, whole complexion of it has complexion changed. Has with, changed with the day exactly. gone. That's right, yes. Yeah. Let's see, he's, he appears to be in a rush. He just, but as you say, that's, that's, that's the way, the way some people bat. That's the way he bats, you know. Hi, Jordan, how are you? He'll get his runs, or he won't get his runs, you know. Yeah. He, won't, he won't waste a lot of time. And he, <laughs> and he won't die wanting. No, he, don't, he doesn't die wanting, that's right. Or die wondering. But I think the good thing about that is that you're, you're not under pressure, scoreboard pressure. No. You know, if, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't come off, then doesn't you're, take still, take you're still at square it. one, yeah, you're not any right. further. Yep. So and if he does come off, he, he puts you he well puts ahead. Well ahead right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. I run away. Move along there, yeah. <laughs> Nine grand at the moment, thanks. Now, Pembroke won this competition two years two ago. Two years ago, yeah. Still the, still the holders. Holders, that's right. There was no... It's the longest rain, I think. Was that at the hills against Warringstown? It was indeed. Yeah. And what a day that I was. I seem to remember we lost to Warringstown in the seventh. Yes. Yes, I think you did. You did. Because we, we, we had that lined up as a good weekend, didn't we? Been, yes, it would have been a great weekend. <laughs> it was a good weekend anyway. Yeah, yeah, so it's good, I can't actually tell you an awful lot about it. Nice right. place to play cricket, though. Yes. At the hills. Oh, that's a nice shot. Kennedy onto the short ball straight away. He's pulled that down square leg, and that's a super four. And that's him off the mark, and it breaks the shackles a bit. Seven overs gone. Nice shot. Yeah. Not a typical Northwest player, but you know, plays, plays very straight, very correct. And has he come across from the Northwest he, to you in the NCU? Yeah, about two, three, two, three years ago, he came across, came down. 
joined the club. You've had a few uh, joiners recently, haven't you? I saw in the off-season there were a few. That... Yeah, well, um, Rossadere. Rossadere played for CSNI. Oh, okay. Some serves north. But then with his brother... Playing for you anyway. Playing for us. Uh, you know, it was a nice fit. And his father, Ricky, and mother Joanna are here today. And they, Ricky played for CI. And Ricky was a good cricketer. Wow, something you know, else so stops the parents having to yeah, go to two different two grounds that's every better. game. Yeah, that's, yeah, they don't have to split their... Allegiance. Oh. Big swing of the bat at that one. Yep. It was about halfway through the shot. I think he decided it was the wrong one to play, to but he gets it. away with it. Yep. Very, very, very. Um, and how's how's your Simon? My our Simon, <laughs> our Simon is he's um, going in. He's going in shortly to get some new hips. Oh. Yeah. That's a shot. Uh, yeah, he's still not around so much now, you know. But uh, he still sticks his head in. Sticks his head in now and again. Well, last time he was here all the time. Himself. Yes, I was chatting to him today. Yes. <laughs> Once met, never forgotten. Never forgotten, exactly. Yes, our Simon had. Okay, he's been through them. He's been through them that one. So. Well, that one gets through the first field up. And he costs the single, though. It's not quite the sunny day I was expecting, or was promised. It's been nice all day, though, hasn't I'll be, it? I'll be taking the receipt back to the Met Office. But uh, it has been nice and yeah. no chance of rain anyway. That's, and let's be honest, that's the last thing you want. Yeah. You don't want it. You don't want DL. DL, that's right, yeah. You don't want don't juiced want overs. Oh, it's up in the air, and it's going to drop short of Gavin Hoey. Just sort of popped up off the bat, really. How do you expect it to come on a bit quicker? I think it just stuck in the pitch. Yeah. Bit of a rebuilding now for yep. the bats. Doesn't mean Kennedy shot. won't play for the boundaries if he can. Good feeling. So Prendergast, captain of the seconds. Fine bit of fielding again. He's just back from injury, and he's showing no ill effects from that at the moment. So that's eight overs gone. There's 61 on the board. See, it's not as bad as I thought being in here, is it? No, no. And it's a great place to watch because it is, you, yes, get, you, you get, get the replays get the <laughs> that nobody else gets yeah. unless they're watching on YouTube. Yeah. I wouldn't like to do it sober. Well, I rarely do. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the, the 50 over games are, are on the challenge. Oh, yeah. You're here for three and a half hours before you, yes, you take a break. I had young Eli in with me earlier. Eli plays for our, I don't know, Cubs, under 11s, whatever they're called now. Yeah, minor boys. Minor boys, he said, yeah. And he was telling us about his semi final win, this, oh, yeah. quarter final win this morning. They're into a semi final. and. And it's, it's, he's, a, he's a good little commentator as well, but I'll tell you one thing, he's a lot harder on the players than I am. <laughs> I might say, oh, there's an opportunity put down, or, or oh, that's a shame, he didn't quite get into Shot. position. And yeah. whereas, whereas Eli is just straight out, well, that's bad. <laughs> he should have caught that. You know, um, that's, that's children, though, isn't it? Absolutely, everything is black and white, yeah. and, and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Daughter walks past. Indeed. Oh, no, no, she's been doing a few laps today. Yep. Got yep. her going orange with her anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> so, Graham Kennedy now to face Punish Meta. Is this your pro? It is, it is. He joined us from Marion. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think I remember, I think he played for Marion. They beat us in the in this cup. A few years ago, probably the year before COVID. I remember. He a few um, years before COVID. Yeah, he's played for a few clubs. Yeah, um, but he's obviously very good. Otherwise, people yeah, wouldn't keep sign him. him. Uh, that's right. And he's yeah. good with bat and ball. Yeah. He had a foot injury earlier in the season, and he was bowling off. I swear to God, off one pace. Right. And at senior level cricket, bowling off one pace, he had one game where he had ten overs for fourteen runs. 
And then in the cup final against Clontarf, 10 overs. Oh, that one's too short. It's gone past the fielder that's there for that shot. That's another four. Nice shot yeah. from Kennedy. 10 overs for 11 runs in a cup final. Falling off the pace. I, mean, I thought that was absolutely crazy that you could you could let that happen. Yes, None of the batsmen nobody got after him, no. Nobody was willing to get after him, unlike Ross Adair, who, who didn't matter whether it was Glenn McGrath or Craig Senior bowling yeah, yeah. to him. He was yeah, coming yeah, down the track and smashing it. Yeah. He does hit a big ball. I say it was quite, uh, quite good. A few uh, in the cup against Estonians, both he and his brother got 100. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So it was that's, nice for the two guys to be batting memories. together when they were. Yeah. When they got 100. That's, yeah. that's how you make memories. Yeah. Another big shot over on the leg side, and Kennedy finds another boundary, and Kennedy's just taken over where Ross Adair left off. I wonder how long it will be before Pembroke yeah, make a change. Spin. Gotta like to maybe slow it down a wee bit. Yep, take the pace take off. Take a pace off the ball. Yep. Let Kennedy manufacture his own pace and his own strength. Yep. Well. As much as the live scoring is good, it's not up to date. <laughs> no, as our technical expert, he does, you know, I just talk, but he sets everything up. He, he's the man. He's man, the te it. technical stuff. He's the only man, let alone main man. But he's let me fulfil it. Childhood dream. You like it, yeah? Oh, I love it. Yeah? Love yeah. it. Yeah. It keeps you you're involved. Keeps, your, ball, keeps me you? away from the yeah. bar. Well, that's the other thing. But yeah, you, it's, the, it's one of the best seats in the house to be watching yeah, the game because like you're concentrating. You do have the replays, you do have other information coming in and going out, and, and you're watching every ball. Yep. Whereas sometimes you're sitting on the sideline, you get into a discussion about last night's Love Island or something. <laughs> and you lose a wicket. Yeah. And there's no replay. No replay. Kennedy just dropping that down to third. Takes the single. And that's the end of the eighth over. And the score's 72 for two. Yeah, still in the strike as well. Yep. And that's exactly what he and CIYMS wanted. Yep. I think we're very fortunate to have two left-handers in the top four. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit more bit difficult for the bowlers to figure out. Absolutely. Having to change your line every yep. time. Yep. Oh, I see Ross Adair has gone for a lap yep. after his innings. He's probably tuned into YouTube just to watch, <laughs> watch himself bat and wonder how he got out. I don't think it worries him very much. No. no, it's another day. Tomorrow's another day, you know. Yeah, that's that's, his... that's that's the great thing, isn't it? If you can just forget what happened before, yeah. whether it's good or bad. Yeah. You know, you, so many times you see guys in the field who've just put down a catch, and their head goes down, and they're thinking about it. And then when the next chance comes, their mind it's isn't in the game. Not in the game. Yeah. Whereas you get the feeling people like Ross Adair, as you say, it's just another day. No, it's another day for Ross. You know. So Hopkins now to Kennedy. He's looking for that outside edge. And Kennedy's looking to push it out in the offside. Well, nothing wrong with the run rate anyway. It's T20 style, isn't it? It is. It is. As I say, I thought CIYMS were win a rush home. Well, there's an edge on that. We all heard just a touch of wood that strangled all the appeals. Maybe it's missed the opportunity for a second run there for very. I think just, just the relief. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just relief. relief get down out. to the other end and stay out of the way. Well, that start that Rotterdam gave. Takes the pressure. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. absolutely. Certainly no. No worries about run rate climbing or anything like that. Well, I suppose it's something that New Zealand did for years with, with great batch was this pinch hit yep. sort of yep. mm -hmm. roll. And even uh, in the column, when you come to yep. the column. Yeah. 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 And now this guy Bracewell seems to be taking on the mantle of uh, well, the ball out of the ground. He basically beat Ireland by himself. Oh, that's a big ball. That's going to bounce once, get over the rope and go into Con's nook. 
Pete Twomley does the fielding over there. I think that's match it off the mark, is it? Well, I think he's he's already got a couple. A couple, yeah. Just pushing it around and trying yeah. to get Kennedy on strike, I think. But that's a fine shot of his own. It shows intent. Oh, great Come effort on. to catch it. I have no idea if that came off the bat. Didn't sound, didn't uh, I didn't hear a sound. No. The umpire signalled it as wide. I'd want to see that ball again before I decide to pass comment on that decision. Kevin Hoey warming up now. One suspects it won't be too long before we see the introduction of leg spin. Used to be a fine pace bowler, but he was getting really? back, back strains and and the such. And so he switched leg spin and of course his dad being Connor Hoey. Connor, yeah. He's the best teacher you could possibly have for leg spin. <laughs> And that's uh, and it's it's got him recognised by the Leinster Lightning. He played up in Breedy in the T yeah. Twenties. So we've got a couple of well. Yeah, I did okay. Oh, ah, and slipped ball. away. Bounces in front of Pooh Sharma, and Pooh gets back in. Pooh's another interesting guy. Two years ago, was playing for our fours, <laughs> but he turns up to nets on Tuesday with the first, Wednesday with the juniors, Thursday with the firsts. He'd come down here by himself on a Friday. Saturday morning would find him in the nets. He worked so hard on his game. And he's... Uh, well, he's obviously reaping the, reaping the reaping rewards. Reaping the rewards, yeah. Yep. OK, still not passing comments on it. <laughs> but thank you for showing it to us now. <clears throat> so just to tell you about our setup here, I know we've had a viewer in the Caribbean. Yeah, one of your fans in uh, Australia. Who was that? Do you remember the name? Oh, this was um, one of your lads walking round. I got a text message from somebody oh, saying right, right. <coughs> saying a doctor friend of theirs was watching That's out there, and I know we've had viewers in the past in the Middle East and in the UK. Yeah. So um, that's kind of cool, you know. It is. And although although you know we're up to five hundred something views today. You look back in a week's time and you'll see all the players have gone in well, to look at their stuff, innings yes, or look at their right. bowling and tap back 10 seconds. What did I do there? There's a lot of analysis of that side of things. So a few of the games get, get very yeah. good viewing figures and they, they only go up because they, they just sit on YouTube now mm -hmm. and they're there for yeah, we, posterity. We, we played um, sort of a playoff to go to that ECL against Bayer of oh. CI. Um, Heatley was saying there was something like seven, because there was no cricket in India at the time there was something like 600,000 views views yep yep if you can if you can hit the right scene in India yeah and get your name and your club out there yeah uh, I suspect the number of views just go I mean look at the Irish the Irish jerseys now they're all covered with Indian yes, yeah yeah Oh, the umpire could have taken that catch. He's put it down. He's let it run out, and it's gone through Dermot Tucker for a boundary. As a man who begged there, could easily have just he put have two caught. hands out and caught that. I mean, that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> However, I agree, yeah. it got, also got through Dermot yeah. Tucker, and it's four more runs. Really ordinary effort from the fielder. Yeah, that's not the start that Howie would have wanted. But at least, if nothing else, it was a little bit in the air. Pushing that one through, Lawson taking it. Danny Hogan at slip. Joe Prendergast, sort of just behind point. That joint, jaunty Rhodes position we normally mm. see JJ Garth in. Yep. It is a bit of a shame that the Premier Cup in Ireland has to be played without the Irish international, isn't it? I, I, I think, think about it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's ridiculous. Well, even if you go to the Cricket Island website and try and find this cup, that takes a while. Yeah. It, there just doesn't seem to be any impetus from Cricket Island to promote the club game, local cricket. And yet, it's the club game that supplies them with all that's their players. Exactly 
without the club game, how good would Ireland be? Yeah. Show me a bowler who doesn't die in the field off his own bowling. Too many times you see players throwing themselves around and, and then two overs later when they've been taken off, a, they walk over one right, at square it. leg, you know. Put their foot on it. Yeah. Here we go. Here's the latest on the match centre. So, Graham Kennedy's got off 21 off 22 balls. He's striking well. Yep. And match it. He's reached six now off nine. Yep. Just the one four for him. Four fours for Kennedy. Yep. And they've all been big blows. I think Kennedy has sort of had the majority of the strike, so. He has during this partnership, that's for sure. <laughs> Ryan Hopkins now continuing from the nursery end. Before these houses were built, it was a market garden. Lots of greenhouses? Yep. <laughs> Just what you want behind a cricket pitch, isn't it? And those houses down the far end, that was all allotments when I joined. Well, it would have been allotments when you were here. Yeah, yeah. Well. Another one he's got big, big ball. ball. And this time, big it's ball. a six. Gone all the way for six. That takes the score on to 91. And these two again, very positive with yeah. their batting, and that's good to see. Good timer of the ball. I think not a big, not a big guy, so Needs times the ball very, yeah. very clean. Very good. Afternoon, gentlemen. That's it. <laughs> oh, this man. <laughs> You'll get some slang on the oh, well, way back now. Yeah. They'll be replaying your commentary. Shot. Prendergast now, a boundary rider. Did you get tea as well? Yes, we did. Break? Yes, very good. Good, good. Teas are good. Yeah, very good. We could probably learn a lesson from that, to be fair. We, we played um, uh, new buildings. Okay. First round. And, Nobody knew whether the T's were wrong, T's were wrong. Yes. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, very good. And I mean, technically, appreciated technically by, T's yes. are off. Yeah. I much mean, there's, there's no requirement to provide yeah. T's anymore, but it's something that Pembroke do for the first 11. Yeah. No. Exactly. And uh, I think it makes a, a big difference. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, we've, we're not getting any T's at the lower levels at all now. I mean, some people point stop. out the absurdity of stopping halfway through a professional game of sport yeah, well. to have some sandwiches and a cup of tea. Surely it should be protein bars and, oh, yeah. and energy drinks yeah. and, and the such like that they're having at, at the break instead of Aunt Shot. Bessie's, oh. Aunt Bessie's <laughs> Victoria sponge, you know? Hard to beat a bit of Victoria sponge. No, no, it? no, <laughs> it's hard to beat that. But, you know what I mean, if they're meant to yeah. be athletes out there, yeah. then, then why are they eating stodge? But uh, yeah, you, can, you kind of miss it. It's the, the, the gathering the together, social, for, yeah, the, the social, social aspect, aspect of the whole thing. The drink driving laws did away with the, the having a pint after yes, the game, right, yes. and now, what we found in Leinster, I, I think that one of the reasons why they're, they're doing away with teas, and especially with the lower sides, is a lot of these clubs that play in parks don't have the facilities. facilities. Yeah. Um, so. It's, it's, Sometimes running water is a problem. Sometimes um, facilities aren't available. Yeah. Uh, such like, and I think that those are the teams that have been saying to Cricket Leinster, "Can we do away with that? It's expense we don't need." It's, it's, it, that. But look, I'm somewhat. I'm getting old now. I've become somewhat of a traditionalist. That's, that's and I like the teas. Um, I remember back here when Nancy used to make the teas, and Nancy's apple pie was was legendary within Leinster circles. But, um, but now, people are going up and buying chicken fillet, chicken fillet rolls and, and the such like. And uh, But we're very lucky. Philip right. Byrne, who runs the bar, and his wife, Bavna, yeah, provides the food. Yeah, they and they do a great job. Bavna do, always does a good job, yeah. and that was, that was a fine curry. Yeah. And the scones and scones and stuff in the morning. This morning were lovely and well and very well received well, from the CI that's, people. That's, that's due to you, Brian. 
what happened was you were talking to Amanda yeah. and we were talking about you coming down and perhaps yeah. coming down last night maybe enjoying a pint or two um, and then you mentioned about the boss and how many of you were bringing down and yeah. so Amanda was straight on to our president Barry Tucker and saying you know they're coming with a crowd yeah. so a bit like using the good room that's yeah, gone for four room. That's right, the good room. <laughs> so we invited you into the good room and we did the scones and the such like? I yeah. think it's it's only right when it's only right. traveling. Right, yeah. Yeah. If your travel time's more than an hour, I think I tea should be on the menu. People have made the effort to turn up to your place. You entertain yeah. them. Yeah, look after them. I'm them well looked after today. Thank you very much. Well, I shall pass that on to Barry Tucker. And the Guinness is good. Well, that's Philip. Philip looks after that, yeah. and, and uh, I think enough of it was flowing last night. Yeah. To keep the pipes, uh, keep pipes the clean. clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nicely played away, but nicely fielded. No single there. Robin Kelly there fielding in the gully. Bats left-handed. Throws right-handed. Another one of those weird people. Yeah. Do you have any red arm to be ambidextrous? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Mm. Got a job here. Where are you looking for? Thank nice you very much. Have you been cool. listening? Have you been listening? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm locked in. <laughs> Lawson. Theo Lawson has got the butter, butter gloves on. He's put a couple down there. And luckily enough, not to any consequence. What was it they call it? They called Rod Marsh gold iron gloves when he got into Australia. Yeah, first, he, he was a real. He was just a club. I was like a. Like a crocodile. I used to play with a guy, not the, but a Liam Plunkett. Yeah, yeah he's he, he was known as Iron Gloves Plunkett for obvious reasons. And then, in the space of a fortnight, he was the middle wicket in a hat trick twice. Really? Yeah. That was his claim to fame. That was well with, well, with me it was anyway. <laughs> now a change of bowling at the nursery end. Poo Sharma. As I say, this guy was playing fourth team cricket only a couple of years ago. He's burst onto the first team side, and certainly early season he was picking up wickets. I think he's he's learning about his bowling as well. And you can't help but learn playing first team cricket because it's, 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 it's a hard school. Yeah, it's a hard school. Certainly is when you have people like Ross Adair and Graham <laughs> Kennedy to bowl at. But Poo, he loves a challenge. Enjoying himself, he uh, <laughs> broke into the first team earlier this year, and after about four games, has a Leinster Senior Cup medal. Yeah, unbelievable. Some people go their whole careers without, <laughs> without such things. Oh, he's bowled him! He's bowled him. That is. Oh, what do they say? Bad balls take wickets. Well, I guess that's because that was not a good ball. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but you know what? Pembroke aren't going to care. They're not going to call him back and say, sorry, sorry, we should really not have bowled that sort of badly. But that's the end of Kennedy. 98 for three now. And this game back in the balance back again. In the balance again, yeah. This is an tip of balance really quickly. Well, didn't he bowl well? Yeah. Um, I was somewhat surprised that they bowled him through 10 at the yeah. start, but maybe they do that really Although he's, he's a captain, so he would uh, he would decide all that, yeah. Jonesy, probably the best, probably the best pro in the NCU over the years, over the last 10 years, you yeah. know. Now, of course, six. coach of the Leinster Lightning yeah. as well. Yeah, six, uh, I'm six sure. NCU senior cup winners medal. Five at, five at CI. Of cricket Leinster have to pay his petrol. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably paying for 
or for a pet on the pound and for a salary. So, yes. <laughs> the way things are at the minute. Yeah, it's the price of fuel is just crazy now. No wonder you came down on a bus. Yeah. At least you can all chip in for that, yeah. you know, it's all shared oh, out. That's great. Nice. Yeah. Ten pounds ahead. The club will, the club will pick up the shortfall. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's good. I just it's just a shame it. the club won't, won't pick up the drinks. Bit yeah, that's yeah, that's nice as well, yeah. yeah. I think you boys will get a decent turn tonight. Well, Sunday night. I know it's a school night for it's me cool anyway. For you. It's yeah, cool for back you in court well. tomorrow. I hasten to add as staff, not as the defendant. That's what I say. <laughs> this time. Oh, that's gone straight through Danny Hogan in the covers. That's that's not what Danny would have wanted, but it was hit with some pace. And it's four more runs, and Jones is not going to hang it once again. It's it's. Uh, Sea ball, hit ball. Yes. No, no playing yourself in sort of malarkey here. And Jones off with a great start there. Pitches that one in short, just played away in the offside, take the single. Ryan Hopkins will tidy up. I think I've put sun cream in my eye. <laughs> the worst things you can do during the summer. I know. Put on so much sun cream this morning, expecting it to be Sahara like. Well, it's more south of Spain like. I mean, we've had a good day out so far, so let's just enjoy what we've had. And despite the cries of the Pembroke team, personally, I think that was going over the top. I don't know why Azam Ali Beg is not giving it out, but that would have been my decision. It's a little high. Here we go. Oh, that's sliding yeah. down leg. Sliding down leg side. But good to get the fielding side riled up. Peel. Let's see how he goes now. That one's taken the edge of the bat, and that's going to fly away for four. It's quite, quite an easy shot when you know there aren't any slips there. So if you're going to flash, flash hard. Especially on, on the outfield, it's so quick. Oh, it is. It is. There was one where. I think it may have been Jacob bowling in the first innings and it beat the keeper. Yeah. And even the spinner, it just ran away. Right away. And the, the fielders weren't getting any closer to it at all. You're getting, you're getting good value for your, for your runs today. You're getting good value for your shots today. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it costs you runs because if you play one out to the boundary, it gets out there so quickly, it's only a single. There's yeah. no chance of turning and coming back it's to one, two. It's a one or a four, isn't it? Yep. Bit of extra Getting bounce of there. Ice, yeah. So a good opening over for Pooh Sharma. He'll be happy. Another wicket for his season's total. But also, CIYMS won't be too upset as they took a few runs yeah. off that. Yep. Yeah. Once again, you have to hit update to this scoring program that you lot use. You <laughs> lot. Well, when I say you lot, it's the other <laughs> union. It's the other yeah, I know union. Yeah, I know what you mean. In Leinster, we use Crick Clubs. Right. And Crick right. Clubs is such that we can actually put graphics up on the screen and have a live score across the bottom. Of oh, it, yeah, yeah. Which we can't do with MV Play. So as long as we have a live scorer down here during the season, you know, for domestic stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we get, we get worms and Manhattan graphs, the whole lot, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, MV Play doesn't allow us that facility. So Jones to face now. Gavin Hoey's leg spin. Two right-handers for him now, which is what he'd want. Be glad to see the back of Kennedy. Yep. Good bit of bounce. He really just does fire it into the pitch. So Jones to face now. Gavin Hoey's leg spin. 
It's kind of strange hearing yourself. <laughs> 20 yards away. Well pitched up. It really is strange hearing yourself. <laughs> Good run. Good run. And Pushama doing the right thing and not firing it down at the stumps. Stage, I thought that uh, Matcha was the captain of this side. I saw himself and Jones chatting away earlier. I think maybe, maybe Jonesy is going to relinquish the captaincy at the end of the year and John, John will take over. Take over. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So might as well coach him into the role now. Yeah, get him in the role. And he's doing more bowling now. He bowled today and he bowled quite well today. So. Oh, that one coming off the bottom edge of the bat. Definitely was looking to pull that away square on the leg side. Sort of hurried him up. Yep. Oh, I'm loving it here, boy. Giving you a good, I'm giving you a good ride up here. Don't worry. <laughs> Call me Murray Cummins. <laughs> Murray Cummins, yeah, okay. Good run. Well taken run. That is not the fielder to take on. JJ Garth, he had four yeah. runouts in the Cup semi final. Oh. You'd have thought after two the other side Same of the game. Well, yeah. yeah, but. Yeah, Gone wise to it. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Well, got a fifth run out to run him over chance, run the chance to fire for him. Yeah. <laughs> so 14 overs gone. Or is that 15 overs gone? 15, I think. 15, clicks over on the scoreboard. You wouldn't believe how many times that scoreboard makes a liar off me. I'll sit here and I'll go, oh yeah, 108 for three off 12 or 14. And then suddenly it goes click, 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 click. And it's 109 for three off 15. Yeah. Or Our scoreboard's the same. Telling people earlier that we're actually going to move into the, the old score box, uh -huh. move all this stuff, and then it would be there permanently, yeah. as opposed to having to pack it up and unpack it every single time. I, I was just, I was saying to some of the guys today that... Lovely. Lovely straight back. Yeah. Well, it's, the, the view here is nice. If you were able to view, view the ground from the other side, looking at the pavilion yeah. on the wall, it will be a special place. When, it will, it is will a special place. It will look very good yes, on TV that yeah, way. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're kind of used to this view now. This is Niles. Third, is this your third year or fourth year of doing it now? Fourth year. And we've covered over 150 games at this stage. About that, isn't it? Yeah, but it does mean you're down here, sort of Wednesday for women's seconds, oh, yeah. Thursday for women's oh, yeah. first, so it's not just for Saturday for somebody's Saturday. game, Sunday for somebody else's game. Are you, and, are you not playing anymore? Then? Uh, I play rarely. I think I've played four games this year. Oh. Lawson misses another one. Another one goes for four. Four buys. Four buys. My um, no, I'm, I'm doing more. I'm doing more commentating than I'm doing coaching. I'm doing more coaching than I'm doing playing. Playing is sort of really being shunted off to yeah. the side now. Are you coaching the younger guys at the club? Or? Uh, women's thirds. Right. It's, it's less a coaching job and more, I don't know, a pick my brains. Yeah. Uh, watching a lot of their games, obviously you pick up the things that they could work on. Um, and Shot. stuff, stuff that maybe they don't understand. Yeah. Why? Why do we do it? Why, why do we why do, do you want me to do this? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not you know, more than a, a fitness coach or technical. It's just, it's just help them out, show them drills or make make small suggestions to help them improve. 
Um, but certainly, yes, the commentary takes up a lot of time now. We're obviously enjoying it. I love it. Childhood, yeah. childhood dream come true. I'm the sort of guy who had a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and, and would record my Matchbox toys racing around the bedroom okay. and I'd commentate on it, uh, that sort of thing. I'm not sure that that should be made widely known to be fair. Well, it was about <laughs> eight, at, eight at the time. <laughs> and then the other thing I used to do was score test matches. Oh, yeah. I'd sit down in the morning, you know, shunted off to Grandma's house for the summer. Yeah. You'd sit down in the morning, take out your scorebook and the test match would start. That would be the summer of 76, which of course you'd remember That's as well. Right. The, 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 the warmest summer, summer, the warmest summer in history. Minister for Drought, <laughs> Dennis Healy. Minister for Drought, <laughs> ridiculous thing. Very short-lived. Yeah. <laughs> about, uh, it was only about three days <laughs> after they appointed him. The rains. Three and a half weeks. Yeah. The heavens opened. You always get these stories of, of I don't know, sheep com spontaneously combusting and whenever there's any sort of temperature. You know, it's hotter here than it is in roads. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes that happens. That happens. I'd still rather be in roads. Yeah. Or at least these days in roads, we could still be watching this game. Yeah. Matty's a very... Nice pair to watch. Very easy on the eye. Well, I've just got a message in from the Honorary Secretary of Pembroke. He's saying, get that He's saying the first score on cricket, no first score on cricket, Leinster. Well, let's tell him, first of all, it's a Cricket Island gig. So you're got, not going to get anything in Cricket Leinster, and YouTube should work, should be working. So how he's continuing now from the St John's end. That shit was all over that though. is to send him the link. This is where I have to listen to myself. Get over. That's the drinks First interval, drink so we'll uh, take a break here. Brian, thanks very much for joining You're me. You're very welcome. Have I've you really enjoyed it. it. I have enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, sure. Come back if you want to. <laughs> if you enjoyed it that much, come back. So we'll take a few minutes break, and we'll join you again after drinks. Thank you. Cheers.
Pujama continues after the drinks break. Top ball. <laughs> creaking table. We're going to have to replace this table if it's creaking that much. Again, if any of our watchers want to get in touch. Punched away on the offside. Ryan Hopkins on the boundary rider. Picks that up, gets it back in. Yep, my phone number is 00353 86156-4442. We take all sorts of requests, like, be quiet, get off air. Who do you think you are? with the Jaffa Cakes. Oh mm -hmm. So this game well and truly in the balance now. 33 overs to get 140 runs. JJ Garth. Is that clean loop? Of course, everyone, be careful out there in the sun today. Too much sun, not good. Yep, I've got sun cream in my eye and it hasn't stopped since stinging and watering like a mad thing. Nice straight bat, plays it out square on the offside. Ryan Hopkins picks it up. One really feels that this is going to come down to can Pembroke take 10 wickets? Thanks to that early onslaught from Ross Adair. One feels that if they bat the overs, CIYMS are going to go through to the next round of the dear currency. Bob Kerr, Irish Senior Cup. Blue Sharma trying to sneak one under the bat there. That went out to mid on. And really, he was trying to play it through mid off. <laughs> End of the 18th over. He's gone big, he's gone long, it's gone for six. It's onto the roof of the nets, six runs. That's a fine shot. Takes him on to 31, match up. Uh, no doubt the scorer would also be delighted. Six runs, big shot. Partnership getting on to 
into the 20s soon. Oh, he has another one that just drifts down the leg side. Lawson very well round to it. Just punched out on the leg side. Just fine, square leg. Brian Hopkins. So after that, coming back in. Chasing the British Open at the moment. The third ODI between England and India. England managed to get 259 all out, and India uh, 212 for five off 37. So they need 50 runs in 10 overs. They're certainly going to need some really good cricket from England to pull that one back. Well, here's the least surprising headline of the weekend. Eddie Jones involved in altercations with Australian fans. Man could start an argument in a phone box. Big appeal, not out. Still going, despite the sun cream in my eye. Streaming, I just can't stop it. I've done everything. Oh well. Put, put some in the other eye and then at least. <laughs> yeah, everything will be blurry then. Hello. your phone here. Good ball from Poo. Yes, how many were down when you... Excuse me. Bribing the judiciary. Oh, that's no, even Pujama hasn't gone up for that. But he's finding the pad. What's the best thing to do if you've got sunscreen in your eye? Yeah. I don't know where it is, but my eye just keeps. Yeah. Although, I don't like Prince Andrew. With regard to sweating, not, not the rest of it. I'm not a member of the royal family. I'm not involved with Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> The best shout Pooh's had yet, that one. Oh, in that case, it's the best shout Gal's had now. 
It'd be nice to sort of sit down with the umpires after the game, show them those decisions and ask them to chat through their decisions. That's never going to happen though, is it? Well. Oh, he's got him. He's bowled him. He's hit the off stump. And Pembroke needed that. That's four down now, 125 on the board. They're halfway to the total, but they've lost the top four. Yeah. Just in case I ever come up before you, you know. Good luck. See you later, John, and congratulations. Thank you. Well. One just stayed a little bit low and moved away. That's what Jones is telling Van der Merve. He's next man in. So 125 for four, and suddenly this game is in the balance. We're in the 20th over. And they're going along at a hell of a clip. They're not going to take 50 overs to get the runs, but the question is, can Pembroke take the wickets before they do? Ball that took his second wicket was an awful lot better than the floor. ball that took his first wicket. Vandermeer comes to the wicket now. Side need him. Well, one would say to dig in, but that's not the CIYMS way today. Their way has been hell and leather thrown at each delivery. So, as well as our overseas viewers in Australia and the Caribbean. We now know that we have a viewer in France on his holidays. Oh, this one slipped down the leg side and it's gone for a five wides and that's not needed. Takes the score up to 130. Jason van der Merve is the new batsman. He joins John Matchett. John Matchett's now on 32 of 41 deliveries. He's hit three fours and two sixes. But he doesn't have the strike rate of his earlier partners. Ross Adair went absolutely mad at the top of the order. He was taking 14, 15 off the first over. This one just clips the edge of the bat and he's, van der Merve is lucky he did so. Would have been very close to off stick as well. But he played it away. He gets his single. Hello. Hello. If they get out when you're walking past, they chase you around the ground. Played away on the offside, and that's going to run away. And that's found the boundary. And although Pujama may have taken a wicket this over, he's gone for a few runs as well. Um, equally important at the moment. But he got the breakthrough, and he got rid of Nigel Jones, and that's a big wicket for Pembroke. 135 from 20 overs. played out in the offside and that ran away to the boundary for four. Gavin Hoey to continue now from the St John's end, the James Cresswell end. Yes, a truly international audience today for Pembroke IPTV, Pembroke Cricket Live on YouTube. Gavin Hoey now. Batsman just chops it down on the offside. Oh, 
Who dives over the top of that, but he does enough to slow it so it doesn't reach the boundary. Ryan Hopkins gets that. Just a single. That brings Van der Merve now on to face. The leg spin of Connor, uh, Gavin Hoey. I really need to tattoo that on the eye, inside of my eyelids. That's a good ball. Well dug out by Van der Merve. Dermot Tucker on his lonely vigil on the railway side of the pitch. Gets that back in, just a single. Yep, this isn't going to come down to overs, that's for sure. Started out at five, but that Rossadair onslaught at the start of the innings has brought that right down to about three, three point, uh, three and four fifths. We'll stick with the imperial measurements for the time being. And the wide down the leg side. Quite loud commercial traffic in the air. This one. Slashed away. Down to Tucker again on that boundary down by the railway. Just a single. Again, pushed away on the leg side this time. Thinking of two. That's the end of Gavin Hoey's over, end of the 21st over, and the score has moved on to 1-4-1 one, for four. Matchett is now on 37. And Jason van der Merve, he's on four. Sharma's going to continue. He's bowling from the nursery end. Well, New Zealand rugby haven't sacked their coach yet. Clunk off the bat for that one. Sneaks through as well. Inside edge of bat, pad, a bit of everything in there. Fushama with two of the four wickets to fall so far. He's going for five and a half and over, but he has picked up those two wickets. Defensive and a very straight bat from Van der Merve. 
Keeps out Pushama, gives another dot. away past square leg boundary rider comes around foolish meta can't stop them picking up two Second, and it's well run and appreciated by the CYM, CIYMS bench. In other news, Limerick defeat Kilkenny. They get three in a row in the hurling. Not a huge amount of sport oh, elsewhere man. going on. Other than that, that we've mentioned already. Another overdone. Two fifty three is the required. 107 required now from 29 overs. As I say, it's not going to come down to the 50th over. So up in Breedy, Ireland back women batted first against Australia, 99 for eight. And at the moment, Australia is 65 for one in chase of that in nine overs. One suspects that isn't going to go too much for longer. Yes, it would. Danny Hogan now, going down to third man. Robin Kelly into the covers. JJ Garth at point. Joe Prendergast now to bowl from the St. John's end. Joe's first foray into the bowling attack. Starts with the dot ball. 106 and 29. Well, if CI YMS back through to the end, one feels they will have won this. As I say, beautiful day in Pembroke. Done all your household chores, might be allowed to come down and watch the conclusion of this thrilling game. Prendergast into bowl. Oh, just gets over Gavin Hoey's outstretched hands, goes for four, and that is 150 on the board for CI YMS in their pursuit of 252. 
So 103 required now. And the question will be, can Pembroke take the other six wickets required? Or will CI YMS get the 103 they require? Played away on the offside this time, past the diving fielder. Danny Hogan comes up from third, keeps it to a single. Van der Merwe on strike now. Well bowled by Joe. 23rd over gone, 150 on the board. 103 required now. Six wickets, 27 overs. The equations are all there. We are looking at a tight game. Yeah, it's, it's only going to get tighter and tighter. This partnership of 26 really coming together now. The CI YMS. Joe Prendergast over, going for five runs. Who Sharma had been going for 5.2, but there's a change in bowling now. We will now see the off spin of Paul Lawton. Paul, who's been in this situation many, many times before, knows exactly what he's doing. Puts down his bowling mark. Two required, six wickets required. Crowd, still a very good crowd here. But again, the majority of it is away supporters. Single taken. That brings Van der Merwe on strike. Faces first ball from Paul Lawson. by Lawson, throwing that one up. It's just a single punch down to mid, long on. It's a quarter-final game. Next game will be the semi-finals. Again, although Leinster dominating the quarter-finals in terms of number of teams in it, Defeated new buildings in the first round. Nicely played again. Again, Ryan Hopkins will just pick that up. One thing you do notice about first team cricket is distinct lack of drop dropped catches. Fifth now, somewhere around 20 drop catches for the season. This one is cut out square on the offside, but Gavin Hoey makes sure that that's only a single with a throw that lands into Theo Lawson's gloves right beside the, the bales. And the driver, uh, the drivers, the batsmen are going to take a drink, the drivers are going to take a bat.
few more people coming into the ground. Some people just completing their laps. The place is quite full today, and that just bodes well. quickly and he's pumped that away through Kale Corner. Four more runs, the score goes up to 159. Once again, the advantage is that early onslaught from Ross Adair is being brought to the fore. Prendergast continuing from the St. John's end, looking for a breakthrough himself. There's that big shot out to the clear corners of Cal. School moves on to 160, 93 required now. Chip, making sure he keeps out the good balls. He knows there'll be a bad ball. They can put away. He already has done. Four off this over is more than enough. Just edged away. Danny Hogan tidies up. Just a single. Beautiful summer, summer's day. Sun now shining down on the ground. The wall looks nice and warm. I see yesterday's hero, Pete Marshall. Three wickets for him yesterday. Quite a good crowd down. I'd say there's about 100 people on the ground now. Sloppy play that by Pembroke. JJ Garth throwing was far too low for the keeper. It got past him, they got through for a single. And that needs 101 is required. Sorry. 91 is required. Paul Lawson now, second over from the nursery end, his preferred end. Big boundary. Danny Hogan down there patrolling. Dermot Tucker, deep square leg. Danny Hogan down in cow. And now Ryan Hopkins joins him on the leg side boundary. He's underneath the tree at the Wheelfield Road end. And Joe Prendergast right in front of the commentary position now. Just there. Paul Lawson fielding his own. And well kept out. Merchant again just waiting for the bad ball. Flows it up. He's hit it. He's hit it hard. It's gone all the way. And that's six runs. Nearly into the commentary box. Nearly took out my cameraman. That's a nice shot by Van der Merve. Straight six. Oh, 
And this one just pushed up to long on, where Ryan Hopkins does the fielding. John March, and he's very close to his half century now. Well, that's a hell of a throw by JJ Garth, skipping off the pitch and hitting Theo Lawson's gloves with a massive thud. Sharma pouncing on it. Down on his hands and knees to make sure he had everything behind that. And that's the end of the 26th over. 24 overs to go. There's that six. That came racing down here. Nearly took out the spectators and nearly took out the commentary box. Eighty three required now. Joe Prendergast to continue from St John's End. Well, fielder's been put out to cow now. Pusharma leaving that one for Gavin Hoy. It will just be a single, but that will suit CIYMS. Singles with no danger. That's all they need at this stage. There he comes Joe Prendergast. Does the fielding off his own bowling. No, 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 no. Played away on the offside, that would be an easy single. Robin Kelly's the man to pick it up. Three balls to come in this over. John Marchant. He'll be looking for a boundary here to reach his half century. This time he just plays it out. Robin Kelly in the covers. Just getting it past the edge of the bat. No contact, though. Jerry Prendergast thinking that he had something there. Wasn't the case. Just dropped down to third for another single. Takes him on to 47. Score to 173. 80 required. And this number just keeps ticking down slowly. But consistently. Yeah. Do hope you, our viewers, our viewer, enjoying your Sunday afternoon with us. Uh, 
super shock as it makes it to the boundary. It's another four. And that is his half century. If not leading from the front, then potentially leading from just behind the leader. He's made it on to 50 now. Will he now decide to relax and open his shoulders? And go down the Rossadere route? Or will he continue? Just take his ones and twos. A bit of a breeze getting up now. That'll make it tricky for the spinners. JJ Garth down for the catch, but it pitched a good five yards in front of him. Hopped up to him. Just a dot ball. Nicely driven up the ground. Hopkins will do well to get to this, and he does. Sliding stop. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, that's screwed off the bat and it's gone through the offside. Gavin Hoey comes in from the boundary. And it's well backed up by JJ Garth. Oh, that's hit. Oh, it's, that's it. That's the catch put down. It's just gone down in the covers. Full toss that was shelled straight into the covers. And the catch has been put down. And that could be the difference between progressing and not. Lift it up and Kelly just puts it down. That's the cut four for his 50. And that was a fine shot and worthy of bringing up a 50. Runs along and just gets past. And there's his half century. Well deserved, well celebrated. I'm sure he might manage a beer on the bus. Especially if he can go home now with the win. Jason van der Merve now facing Punish Meta. Pembroke in need of a wicket now. PDQ. Is Punish Mater, the man to take it. Oh, it's slashed uppishly. It makes it all the way out to Dermot Tucker. And we take the single. 180 on the board now. Just 73 required. Bit of heat on the ground again now. Amazing how the wind drops, the sun comes out, and the temperature rises two or three degrees. Dead bat played to that one. Still shot away. No sign of Sydney the seagull today. Oh, is that him? coming into ball, St. John's end. Pitches in there, it's lifted, but again, with little danger. And once again, another single. Yeah. 
very stiff today. Playing I was. But I wasn't playing to this amount of stiffness, I can tell you. The bruise on my leg reminds me I was playing yesterday. What a bruise it is too. Sort of bruise I'm only willing to share in direct messaging. It won't be up, won't be up on Facebook and I'll be staying away from the front of Niall's camera. Oh, there's a bit of heat there again now, isn't there? Definitely warming up again. This time, JJ Garth very quickly onto that. Good footwork, got himself into a throwing position straight away. And then realized that they weren't running a single. 30 overs are gone now. Very close to a second drinks break. And you know what? Quite close to a CIYMS victory. They need 72, Pembroke needs six wickets. That's another good shot, that's another boundary. And this run is required, dropping quite dramatically now. Lawson needs the breakthrough, Pembroke needs the breakthrough. And it doesn't seem to be coming at the moment. That's a good ball from Lawson. Needs a lot more of those. This one tossed up a little bit further. Batsman not tempted, just playing it back and out. Cracked up to Joe Prendergast. Joe getting down to the long barrier, making sure there was no danger of it getting through him. We're just going to take the single from the one punched on the ground to Ryan Hopkins again at long on. One ball remaining in the over. The way it's going at the moment, this game is starting to meander. But meander to the tune of the CIYMS bats. Oh, he's edged that one away. And when things aren't going for you, they aren't going for you. Would have been easily swallowed by a first slip. But due to the onslaughts earlier, no slip there this time. And instead, that edge runs away for four. 190 on the board now. 63 required from 20 overs. Oh, just sliding past. Enough of an edge to get it past the gloves of Lawson. And then it just ran away to the boundary where it just hopped. <laughs> Punish mate are now. And St John's end, desperately searching for the breakthrough that Pembroke need at this stage. 
is their reign of reign of terror. They reign as champions of the Bob Kerr. Coming to an end today. July 17th, 2022. Hmm? Yeah, we were all Ireland champions. I wouldn't change that. Oh, that ball just doing its best to sneak past the bat. I was looking for a bigger shot than that towards Cal. Wasn't going to work out for him this time. Again, just taking the single. These two playing very sensibly now. All the big hitting was done earlier, and all they need to do now is accumulate. And that's exactly what they are doing. Just edged off his legs, comes down to Joe Prendergast. A walked single, another one off the total. The cornered rate's got to be somewhere around, or less than, just about three and over now. Just keep picking up these singles, left, right, and centre. Just turning over the strike, turning over the scoreboard. It means that when they do come across a good ball like that, they can just play it out and know that it's not going to affect the run rate. now, far and wide. Oh, again, if it's going your way, it is going your way. Inside edge beats everybody, runs down to the boundary. That takes the score up to 196 off 31 overs. Fifty-seven. Is now the required total. Six wickets still required. 57 for six. Well, you'd be thinking that you should be getting there from here. And especially if your luck is running that way. Look at that. You get as many runs for that as you do your glorious cover drive. Paul Lawson now will continue from the nursery end. Umpire Azim Ali Beg. He's standing there. That one just down the leg side. It's going to be called a wide. Well, CI YMS proved to be very strong opposition today for Pembroke. And started with that first wicket falling in the second over. Although they had a couple of good stands. Pembroke weren't ready for the onslaught that was Rodas Rodare at the start of the second innings. And that's for a game changing moment. And De Merv has now moved on to 33, and it's taken him no time at all. His partner's allowed him the freedom to play his shots. Well, 
This one gets hit straight back to the bowler. Collects it without fuss. Big sweet shot comes out against Paul Lawson. And that's four. Behind square on the leg side. Well, that's 200 up now. That means the runs required to just 51. These two have batted very sensibly. Played nicely away on the offside. Gavin Hoey doing a good job patrolling that boundary today. Well, this is the difference a drop catch makes. Pembroke just look a little bit quiet in the field now. That was a nice shot, just pulled away. Once he hit it and he knew there was a boundary there, nobody was going to fetch that. Yep, if you can still read that scoreboard, you're doing well. Well, if it's full screen, then I suspect you can see it. Better picture now. Ryan Hopkins now will come on at the St. John's end. See you later, Ryan. Did you finish your colouring in? required 18 overs to go it's not going to take 18 overs number eight these two are batting it is it is Pembroke need wickets yes the Adair also turned it into Pembroke need to take the wickets see why I'm just need to bat the overs Another one just chopped down to third. Danny Hogan again will take that from there. I'm going to go and move them now. And the over. It's a wide ball down the leg side. One more onto the total. Well, this is going to need a comeback of epic proportions now. Good ball from Hopkins, just well kept out. That's all that's needed now. Martian can see it through to the end. He'll see his side to victory. He's slashed that one around. It's just got past JJ Garth. Danny Hogan keeps it to a single though. Now the camera view is clear. Driven away through the covers. Dermot Tucker making great ground, but he won't be able to prevent two. And well backed up by Pooh Sharma. 
And that's the end of the over. That's 33 overs gone. Score is 207 for four. Martians on 71. Van der Merve has moved very quietly and efficiently onto 36. The score has gone on to 209 for four of 33. Now it's going to take a collapse. For some of our older viewers, it's going to take a collapse like a Lancashire mill tower being brought down by Fred Dibner. Yeah, Fred Dibner. Steeplejack extraordinaire. Pooh Sharma to return now. His wicket-taking uh, ability really needed now. This seems to be an all or nothing move by Pembroke to bring Pooh back on. He's, he's taken two wickets. Has probably looked the most likely to do to take more. Keeping the ball well pitched up. It's doing very well. <laughs> Welcome back for the fourth time today to Brian Bannigan. sure that that was the right call. No run. Well, I'd like to take this time and this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in today. I do hope you've enjoyed this broadcast of Pembroke Cricket Live and perhaps might join us again in the future. Well, Throw from JJ Garth, careers into the stumps and goes for a boundary. As I say, if it's not going your way, it's not going your way. It's going to be a happy busload of people heading back up to Belfast tonight by the looks of it. Goes down to third man. There is a fielder down there at the scoreboards. of a difference would one wicket make to this now? Ah! Two sounds. And I thought I heard bat first there, to be honest. It was a real, it was a real baseball. Well, he was well in by two feet. And then the ball runs over the boundary to gift another four. <laughs> nicely played out, square on the offside, but also nicely fielded. That's the end of the over, that's 34 overs gone. 2 1 4 is the score. And as we take another drinks break, I'm sure Niall will be... All right. Well, Niall will be taking a break as well. We'll talk to you again. We'll leave Dougal on for you. Our ground mic. Let's see how far Niall gets through these replays.
And they're on their way back, I So after what we think, will, well, what is definitely the last drinks break of the day, Gavin Hoey now will come on from the St John's end. If not a last throw of the dice, it's a penultimate throw of the dice. 39 runs required now from 16 overs. Again, they just need to push the singles. Uh, oh, what a way to start after drinks. Four runs. Just wide of the two players who could possibly have got to it. See you soon, Billy. See you soon. President Billy Gallagher, one of the many past presidents we have these days. Residing in the area, still coming down to watch the team. Clipped away, Pooh Sharma onto that, make sure there's no single. However, with that previous shot going for four, that takes all the pressure off. Well, this has been a fine match-winning knock. John Marchant is certainly in some form. He won player of the match yesterday in the NCU 20 over competition. And now today, he's doing enough to bring his side to victory. One can't forget the contribution of Ross, Ross Adair at the top of the innings. He really did put them on the road to victory. 
And it's Martian's calm head, 81 on the board. But he's finally going to see his side home, surely, at this stage. Uh, Van der Merv cuts that one away. That's going to reach the boundary. No fielder's going to get to that. And Jason Van der Merv in his support. He moves on to 40 now. And one has to think that these two have put on a match-winning partnership for CIYMS. Catch by Robin Kelly has really come back to bite. These two now just sedately taking themselves closer and closer to that 2-5-3 two, three, two, three that they require. 2-2-3 two, two, at the moment, just 30 more required. And they have 15 and a half overs to do it. Another one that's got away. Come off at a strange angle. Thirty-five overs gone now. Fifteen required, but just twenty-nine required. Six wickets for Pembroke if they're to pull this one out the fire, and you have to think that those six wickets have to come in the next ten overs. I presume that's for a partnership. And I'm guessing it's close to a hundred partnership. If not, exactly a hundred partnership. Well, we're assuming it was a partnership. Well, it's a match winning, match winning 100 stand. Been a while since Pembroke have taken a wicket. Oh, that's that's hit down towards me here. It's coming into the commentary box. <laughs> well, I talk about coming into the commentary box. That actually hit our monitor. Luckily, it hit, it hit the back of the monitor, not the front. And that's four more onto the total, and four less to be got. The only question in my mind now is, will John Marchant get the well-deserved century that his knock, his innings has earned? At no stage has it been flashy. He's just gone about his business, got the runs his team needs, put together the partnerships. No, he's done very well today. <laughs> it's about there somewhere. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't travelling very fast by the time it hit that. But as soon as he hit it, I knew it was coming towards us. Oh, my I only, right my I thought you were catching it. No. I thought you were going to be taking it on the babies there. So. And this one. Chris clears the field up. Well, I don't see much difference there. <laughs> and whether not out from Azim Ali Beg. Once again, one wonders if there were two noises there. 
first shot. I have this queued up to replay. No, you don't. Just gonna smash down there. And then. That one only just cleared Joe Prendergast. Well, I think that's going down leg. Twenty three is all that's required now. Joe Prendergast fighting to the end. From his walk, you think the jig is up, but from his fielding, you'd think he's rising it. So, Gavin Hoey now will bowl from the St John's end. And with just 22 required, I'd like to thank all of you who have tuned in today, catching us on Pembroke Cricket Live on YouTube, especially our visitors today, CIYMS. Well, if you find you're rained off at home, you can always have a look and see if there's a game on in Pembroke. And the move plays one square on the offside. I think 21 required. Van der Merve needs eight for his half century. Marchant needs 14 for his. That's 22. That's exactly what's required. Can they split the runs that well? Well, there's six. Well, Martin goes on to 92. He latched onto that very quickly, got underneath it and lifted it into the gardens. Well, that is some shot. And that takes him up to 92. Takes the score to 137, 237. And it looks like they're going to be denied. Pembroke's reign as the Bob Kerr All-Ireland Champions coming to an end. That was a beautiful shot. He played it on its length, saw how short it was, and very quickly swiveled and lifted it into the gardens. We might have a new fence, but sometimes it just isn't high enough. Quicker ball push through, doesn't stop them taking the single. 93 he's on now, his partner on 43. And whether he gets to his century or whether Van der Merve gets to his half century, it's a mute point. All that CIYMS will be caring about is that their name will be appearing in the semi-final of the Bob Kerr for 2022. And they will have deposed the reigning champions Arm ball from the Ga Gavin Hoey. <laughs> that one nearly sneaking through, but Vandermeer doing very well to keep it out. And that's the end of the 37th over. 13 overs remain. Yeah. 
14 runs required. Both batsmen need seven to reach their respective landmarks. Be a century for John Marchant. Match it and a half century for Van der Merve. They've already reached the century partnership. They've already won this game. All that's to be decided now is the margin. At the moment, the margin is six wickets. And how Pembroke will be ruining that drop catch. It may not have made any difference to the result, but it may also have opened up an end at a time when Pembroke needed to take a wicket. Pusharma then, from the nursery end. Big bat comes out, but Robin Kelly is all over that. All about personal pride now. Pusharma desperately wants to take another wicket. But instead, he's yeah. back over his head. And that's four more runs, and that takes him up to 97. It takes the score to 10 needed. He just needs three more on his side. Thomas Woods. Thomas. 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 Ten runs required. This one hit up towards Joey Prendergast. Joe going into the edge of the ring with an enthusiasm. <laughs> Just played away wide, and that's going to go for four runs, and that will take him on to 47. And it really has become a race as to see will either one of them make the landmark, and if so, which one? Five required now. One of them needs two and the other one needs three. Perhaps they might just hit a four each and be done with it. Good ball from Pooh Sharma. So Jason van der Merf just plays that one out. kept out and that's the end of the 38th over so five required and still neither batsman has reached neither batsman has reached the landmark All the fielders are in the ring now, except for Boonish Meta down at Long Off. And there's somebody down at Long On. My eyesight is failing me. <laughs> so 
So will the batsmen have noticed how close they are to their respective landmarks? <laughs> or is it all about the team victory? Well, we'll find out soon enough. That's a big hit. It goes all the way. Scores a level, but John Marshall has reached his century, and it's a match-winning century. He was man of the match yesterday in the T20 Cup in the NCU, and he's man of the match today. He has brought his team. Scores level as he reaches his 100. He moves on to 102. And he is delighted. So the scores are level. And again, the talk in the first innings. The talk in the first innings was a power score of 250. Scores are level. Well, the scores are level now. That was awarded as a four, and that means that 252 plays 252. And it's up in the air, and he's out. The scores are level, and John Margin departs for 102. And that is a great innings, match-winning innings. He is going to get some round of applause from around the ground now as he approaches the dressing rooms. What a super knock. What a super weekend. It's a weekend that will live in the memory of this man for a long, long time. T20 man of the match in the final yesterday. Man of the match today for a fine 102. in 102 balls. Well, Collins is the next batsman out. Scores a level. And as unlikely as it seems, Pembroke now need five wickets without conceding a run to make it a tie. And that's one dot ball. Finally, Sky's one. And the catch is taken. Danny Hogan with the safe hands. See Pembroke going to the last ball of the game. And there we go. The winning leg buys. Ball runs down to the boundary. And there it is. Van der Merve is stranded on 47, but he won't mind one moment. The important thing is... But come the semi-final draw for the clear currency, Bob Kerr, Irish Senior Cup, the name CIYMS will be in the draw, and the name of Pembroke will just be on the cup from 2019. Fine win. We wish CI all the best in the next round, and hopefully we will have lost the eventual winners. Well, it's a fine run that Pembroke have had in this competition. Held the cup since 2019. COVID years ensuring no play at that stage. But Pembroke's reign as the All-Ireland Bob Kerr champions comes to an end and they've been deposed by a very worthy CIYMS team. 
They'll be very strong going into the final semi-final now. And we'll be interested to see who they get in that draw and how they get on. What about it, Jason van der Merve, his century partnership with John Merchant. Well, that's what changed the game. That plus Ross Adair's absolutely brutal start. He went after Punish Meta and took four, four and six in his first over. And he went on from there. That's a fine game and a fine performance. Well-deserved winners tonight, CIYMS. We'd like to thank you for what was one of our larger crowds on YouTube this year so far. We hope you enjoyed the sunshine. We hope you enjoyed the cricket. So for me, Craig Senior, and my technical director, my producer, my instant replay man, my scoreboard man, Niall Walsh, we say thank you, and we'll see you again soon.